podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, August 27th, 2022. This is episode 1921. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by userway.org. Userway is the world's number one accessibility solution, and it's committed to enabling the fundamental human right of digital accessibility for everyone. When you're ready to make your site compliant, deciding which solution to use is an easy choice to make. Go to userway.org slash twit for 30% off Userway's AI-powered accessibility solution. And by CashFly. Deliver your video on the network with the best throughput and global reach, making your content infinitely scalable. Well, practically. Go live in hours, not days. Learn more at CashFly.com. Why, well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Why, well, hey. Well, hey, it's time for the Tech Guy Show. I thought I'd try something new, but I guess you don't like it. It, uh, it felt a little odd. <laughs> I will say that. Yodely. <laughs> Leo Laporte here, your Tech Guy. Micah Sargent, your Tech Guy. You got double the Tech Guys, double your fun on the Tech Guy Show today. What do we talk about? What do we? What do we talk about? Computers. Oh yeah. The internet. Oh, yeah. Home theater. Oh, definitely that. Smart wearables. Smart wearables? Yeah, what because the they're watches, they're rings. Oh, I was thinking more like diapers, they're I clothes. guess. There are smart okay. diapers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. How many times has baby done a doo-doo? You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh, my. God. You know, parents like having been a parent, uh, I believe you don't really need... <laughs> <laughs> to, it's pretty obvious. I think hundreds of years of our history. Yeah, I think we you know. Don't really need that. I think we know what baby's up to. <laughs> but you know, maybe if you're not, maybe this is the new parenting where you know you give baby some space, man. <laughs> baby, you do your. Baby, thing, you baby. do your thing over there. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that. I guess. <laughs> Smart Ooh. diapers. Micah is an expert in all things iOS, Apple, Windows. That's pretty much everything, I guess. The internet. <laughs> I do my best. Social. You're uh, reassuring me because I'm scared. Oh, Instagram's no. been following me around. Yeah, yeah. this is a, a new... Uh, you might see this post pop up on Facebook or Instagram, which happen to be owned by the same company, Meta, where it says, Warning! Instagram is tracking your location with precise location. And there are a couple of memes that are going around. There are these text memes that you see, and it's just a text wall that's trying to spread fear and panic. And is it not true? It is. Okay, so this is the thing. The the delivery of it is inaccurate. It is true that there is a feature called precise location and that it is uh, sort of the way that we've always done things in terms of location tracking on our mobile devices. Uh, Apple recently, well, actually not so recently, iOS 14 introduced the ability to sort of cut back on how precise someone is able to track you, an app is able to track you. Right. So they give you give the app a more general location. Which is basically the cell tower instead yeah, of... Yeah, exactly. And so this is uh, now a feature where whenever you give an app your uh, in location information, it says, do you want to give it your precise location? Right. Or just... You get the general, choice. But yeah, yeah, you get the choice. But someone at some point misunderstood this. Oh, and thought that it meant that now Instagram was starting to use precise location, even though that's the way that it's been for years, the it's newer nothing new, version, nothing it's nothing new. In other words. And they are claiming that it's helping criminals stalk you on Instagram. Well, does Instagram strip out the information in the photo about your location? Because, you know, people sometimes will post photos that have their GPS coordinates, so the coordinates right. where the... Like I don't take pictures of my house for that reason. Right. It was so. This is this is the thing. It's a choice uh, that you. So make. that's also. But you know that's in the photo too. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's within the metadata. If you choose, you can go into Instagram setting and say don't don't show use that. that. Okay. And actually, if you if I were to go and download a photo from Instagram by doing my right click hacker magic and saving the photo, yeah, it would not have you that metadata that. in there. Okay. Yeah. And when you post on Insta, because I'm a you know. As you know, big I'm, I'm big with the kids. Yeah. Uh, 
you post on Insta, you can choose a location. And usually I'll choose like generic, like yes. I'm in Petaluma, Petaluma. California. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just to be, just to be safe. Does that override any additional information that's floating from... It, so it doesn't make a change to the photo. Everything that's built into the photo kind of gets stripped away because Instagram Good. is processing they, that photo they, they anyway. They take it anyway. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, I uh, the other day, I probably shouldn't say this on the air, but I, uh, I did one of those... Uh, you know, they have sites where you can do background checks. And I thought I should do a background check on myself. Mm -hmm. You know, see what I've been up to. Yeah. In case I did anything when I was, you know, asleep or something. <laughs> yeah. It knows not only where I live today, but everywhere I've ever lived, every phone number I've ever had, all the people I've ever, like, had a relationship with, Whoa. new kids, everything. It's like this thing. And as far as I know, I never went to jail. Uh-huh. Okay. But they, they said I never went to jail. Good, There's no good, liens, yeah. no tax liens. Yeah, I guess that's what you use that stuff for. But uh, I was kind of stunned that in the public record, if you're a movie star, I, I looked into this. I thought, well, how would you prevent that? Because real estate transactions, for instance, are public record. Right. And if you're a movie star, it's a complicated process. You hire somebody. You form an LLC. <laughs> you can't be a member of the LLC because that then becomes public information. And so they can tie the LLC to you to your house. So you hire a guy or gal to be the LLC's sole member. You better trust that person because they own your house. I was going to say, you have to absolutely trust this person. <laughs> you probably have a side agreement with them if they're a lawyer. So they say, hey, you don't own this uh, house. Okay. I own this house. But nevertheless, that's the length you have to go to. You can't own it. If you own it outright, uh, So just don't buy record. a house is what you're saying. Never buy homes. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, you know, uh, not that... A lot of people show up my front door or anything. But I was thinking, what if I didn't want this to be in the... It's in the public record. You know, right. it really is. And it, anybody who's curious, there's lots of sites where you can look yourself up and see, see the horror. Hey, did you see... Uh, did you listen to the three-hour Joe Rogan interview with Mark Zuckerberg? I, Speaking of meta? I, I Three didn't. hours. All I heard was that he was complaining that uh, it's like he wakes up and gets punched in the stomach. He says, being, being the owner of meta, it's like getting up every morning... And being punched in the stomach, he then clarified, "Well, it's not. It's not that that it's a bad thing. <laughs> I love getting punched in the stomach. It's my favorite. Uh, it's just that he wakes up and uh, there's uh, a lot of um, text messages that he, you know, emergencies. That's true of anybody. I imagine who owns yeah. a, a big company or is a CEO. Uh, there's a lot of emergencies, and uh, as a result, I ha I feel like I'm being punched in the stomach." I'd like a punch. Uh, you know, he's like one of the richest men in the world. I'd like that punch. I'll I take that. It's would kind you, of surprising to me. Would you be willing if you were, let's say I'd, I'd say, okay, you're now worth $50 billion. Okay. Would, but, but every morning when you wake up, you have to feel like you're punched in the stomach. Would you take that offer? Uh, I think, <laughs> I, I think I'd like to believe I would, but man, would I be unhappy? I think. Yeah, or I maybe, feel bad for him. Maybe he says, I'm not unhappy. I just, that's how I feel. Maybe it's more of a change in, in the sort of way that you uh, interpret things. When maybe, you have that much Maybe money. life becomes. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I've always, I find, I think when you have, when you're that rich, it isn't as fun as it sounds like. Yeah. It's like on The Sims, if you use the cheats. Yeah. And then there, that takes a level of fun out of the game because suddenly it's you can easy. just do everything. God mode, they yeah, call it. God yeah, mode, yeah, 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 yeah. Mark is God mode. He also is uh, has taken up mixed martial arts. He's punching other people <laughs> in the stomach, which I think is compensation. I'm just saying. Um, uh, there was some stuff about Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah. Uh, that people were a little upset that face the parent. Mark said the FBI called and said, "Hey, can you can you take those posts?" Can you limit the exposure of the story because the election's coming up? Beware of polarizing content. Uh, he said, the FBI is a legitimate institution. Well, thank you, Mark. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I feel legitimate. Yeah. They, they and been. the warning prompted him to take that seriously. However, the story was allowed to remain on Facebook, but uh, with limited exposure. FBI says is provided companies with foreign threat indicators uh, to help protect their platforms and customers, but it is not allowed uh, to ask direct companies to take action on information received. Uh, 
And thank you, Mark, for calling us a legitimate institution. We really, really, really appreciate it. No, they didn't say that part. The FBI routinely notifies U.S. private sector entities, including social media providers, of potential threat information, but then it's up to them to decide what they're going to do about it. Meta responded on Twitter, which is weird. I don't okay, understand. Okay, wait, on Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> huh. The, they, they tweeted, because I guess they figured more people would see it if they tweeted. I don't know. Uh, the FBI shared general warnings about foreign interference, nothing specific about Hunter Biden. So they confirmed. They they said, yeah, the FBI, that's that. what they said was right. So uh, I think, it, it, I don't even think it was specifically about Hunter Biden anyway. Uh, Zuckerberg said we're going to release a new virtual reality headset in October. Yeah, right around the corner. I wonder October. If gonna... It'll have a few big features, quote, including eye and face tracking so people's VR avatars can accurately mimic their facial expressions and users can feel as if their avatar is looking directly at another person's social avatar, but it won't let you comment on the fact that they have no legs. It's not... You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't say that. Not actually. allowed. They will, they will just mute... Boop. <laughs> can't look at his legs. Don't look at his legs! <laughs> I'm making a joke because the uh, Horizon world that's Facebook's creepy, <laughs> really creepy... Uh, virtual social environment the people are walking around but it's only from the waist up the rest is there's nothing there's nothing there no legs or anything else below the waist yeah I no. think that they they at, this, at some point someone tried to explain why it was that way and it now escapes me oh uh, it's because legs down are the hard. line well and down the line they want to be able to track your face and its emotions and so they are sort of prioritizing the parts of the body that they want to actually have show up in the in the virtual space versus your legs where they're not going to be tracking those so that the you know yeah doing that movement and trying to get that right would just end up looking goofy i guess more goofy they feel than just not having them there at all yeah um there's three hours, so there's probably a lot more. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for the folks who went and listened to it and summarized uh, it for us. Uh, Zuckerberg touched on algorithms and content moderation, according to CNN, as well as lighter topics like his morning routine and his family's love of jujitsu. <laughs> according to Zuckerberg, jujitsu is a big part of who I am, which is hard without legs. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so he, no jujitsu in Horizon World. <laughs> well, only karate chops. He gave up jogging uh, for jujitsu. That must he be says. Here's, you want to know why he gave up jogging? Oh wait, he actually did. I thought that was yeah. more of a joke about. No, he legs. used to jog, but he said the problem with running is you can think a lot. Oh, apparently not interested in thinking. Escapism. He doesn't want to think. That's what because he because getting punched in the stomach he didn't want to prolong that so he switched <laughs> to something in which he couldn't think. That sounds like you'd think that the somebody who has that much money could pay for several therapists. I wake up in the morning. Actually, how does Mark talk? I wake up in the morning. Look at my phone. You get like a million messages of stuff that come in, and it's usually not good. People reserve the good stuff to tell me in person. So it's almost, I don't think he really talks like that, does he? So it's almost like you wake up and you're punched in the stomach. So it's like, okay, now I need to go reset myself, reset myself, reset myself, <laughs> yes. and be able to be productive and not be stressed out about this. I used to run, but with, with running, you think a lot. He likes surfing. He likes foiling. Remember that Instagram mm -hmm. post from uh, 4th of July last year where he was riding a thing Some sort of weird weird foil in the air with the american flag and zinc oxide all over his face so he looked like essentially a surfing mime a surfing yeah. patriot mime 8888 <laughs> ask leo is our phone Please. number <laughs> that's a bad image he had legs in that one 8888 ask leo if you want to talk high tech ask leo and micah you can dial the phone number if you want uh we're gonna take your calls right after this It's E L O hello. Hello. On the telephone <laughs> line. That's Kim Schaffer. She's on the telephone line awaiting your call. She's what's on the other end of 8888 Ask Leo and Micah. 
which actually works. Oh, yeah. You can dial all those numbers if you want. <laughs> if you want to take the get time. Get the oh, workout yeah. out in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we thought about that ahead of time when we got the number 20, 20 years ago. Right. We thought, you know, someday there'll be a mica, so let's get... <laughs> Mike wasn't even born. It wasn't no. a twinkle in the eye. So this show, I at the end of the year, uh, actually January fourth of next year, I will be. Uh, I will have been doing this show for nineteen years. Wow! Nineteen years ago, what were you doing, Micah? Um, <laughs> mo- wh- fourth to- grade, I was toddling. Third grade. You're in third. third okay, I guess yeah, I'm a little bit older. Third grade. Wow. Oh, yeah. See, wow. I had a moment there where I thought I was younger than I am. <laughs> so I was counting back. He was going backwards. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, yes. You grade. were merely a twinkle. So, Kim, mm-hmm. did you have a good week? Yeah. How yeah. about you? I don't remember it, though. I don't remember. It, I, don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I it's think it was blur. good. It is all a blur. It's, it's all a blur. all a blur. I started making chicken soup last night about 7 p.m. That was a that's, bad idea. That's a really bad idea. Yeah. Because then it bed. wasn't done till 10. I'm going to bed. And Lisa said, <laughs> Your soup's still cooking. <laughs> and I said, Oh! And I, I ran out there. Fortunately, it, it was fine. I mean, you know, it's stuck, so it takes a while to kind of cook down. And then this morning, I kind of I, I made the some chicken to put in it. And Dr. Mom's going to send me some matzo balls, and we will have soup. Yay. Yeah, that's a project you start more like 7 in the morning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. You wanted soup. You I wanted soup. I was in the mood. I had a chicken <laughs> and a big pot and some water. I thought, I'll make soup. <laughs> Who should we uh, start this show with? Let's go to Jane in Manhattan Beach. Oh. I think you might be helping her spend some money oh. soon. Oh, oh, Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Hello, Jane. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guy, too. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, Leo and Micah. Hi, Jane. Um I remember a couple of uh, Saturdays ago that the topic was um, Mac Mini. So this is an Apple question. All well, right. One. Okay. Um, but I really want both your opinions. I believe at that time that Leo had said only get Mac Mini with one terabyte, which I agree with getting the largest um, amount of um, memory there. Uh, and... Um, then Micah had, had said, do not use Mac Mini plus one terabyte external. Oh, I think what we were talking about is the Mac Mini. By the way, you should probably know Apple has an event coming up. It's official September 7th. They will not announce new Mac Minis then. They will announce new iPhone, Apple Watch, new AirPods probably. But it's widely believed they will announce new Mac, Macintosh computers, including perhaps an upgraded Mac Mini in October. So that's data point number one. But we're referring to the M1, Mac, the current Mac Minis, the, not the Intels, but the higher end Mac M1s. And what we're, I think we've observed and been told by others is the internal storage on M1 computers, not Intel, but on N1 Macs is much faster than external storage, even with Thunderbolt 4. So if you need, if you have a need for speed, <laughs> If you are the Tom Cruise of computing, then it is a good idea to get as much internal storage. It doesn't have to be a terabyte, but as much as you're going to need or you think you'll need, because that will be faster. If you, I mean, it's okay to put data on an external slower drive. I've always done that with a Mac Mini. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. But the stuff that you want to be fast, video that you're editing, photos, and of course the applications in Mac OS should be internal. So... A terabyte's a good size. You don't probably need yeah, more. Yeah, terabyte than that. is exactly what I have on the uh, Mac Studio I have at home, and oh, that's nice. it's fine. Yeah, but having external storage where you're just storing files, things like that, that's that, that could be not external. Gonna, yeah, notice a difference. Yeah. it's just nice to not have to think about it. That's why I always say get as much storage as you can afford because then there's no management. But but I but I I would reiterate, Jane, that you might just want to wait if you can another October right? month or so because mm-hmm. I. Uh, the new Mac Mini is rumored to have the M2 chip. Might have a lot of new features. And if not, the old ones will be cheaper. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. So we just, we had to break there, Jane. Sorry, but we're still with you. Oh, thank you. Good. Thing. I appreciate it. <laughs> I know, because you only got the first part of your question out, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, at the moment, financially, it's a cost savings to get the uh, Mac Mini plus a SanDisk one terabyte external. Uh, 
And um, you I, could get. I mean, honestly, it would be fine to get uh, two fifty six or five twelve internally. Uh, it's just about speed. So unless, I mean, what are you, you're probably not doing anything. You need a lot of speed, or, or what are you doing with your computer? Oh, right. I'm mostly doing documents, some photos, etc. And um, I can get the 512, but my I'm transferring from my uh, older um, iMac to this one, and I've used uh, almost 512. Ah, but that that means you would have to get another drive, an external drive for the Mac Mini. I, the thing I think what we were what we're saying really is just it's good to know that the internal storage is significantly faster than any, any external storage so that doesn't mean that you have to get it <laughs> it just means if if you have an urge if you need a lot of speed let me look at the um prices for the mac mini so the the base model 699 comes with 256 obviously that's not going to work for you to transfer everything you've got over you'd have to get right. you'd have to get an external drive and then you'd also have to probably most of what's on that 512 though is data not programs and mac os almost certainly not yeah probably your photos if you've got them downloaded entirely and you're not using icloud photo library other documents that you've created over that's time. that's what's huge yeah so what i would suggest if budgets you know because it's 200 bucks more to get 512 and it's even more to get more than 512 so get the 256 that's what i have right in front of me right now and set it up don't copy everything over just set it up with the Mac OS and your applications. There's a when you first get the new computer, it says you want to copy copy from the old computer and you say yes, and then it shows you all the stuff. Just check the box that says apps. Leave the other boxes unchecked. So that will leave you plenty of room on 256. And then you will have to buy an external drive, but they're not expensive. They're under 100 bucks for an external terabyte. And copy that data over. That'll be nice because then you'll have much more room than you. You'll have double the space of your old system, more than double. And I'd still get quote the speed. Yeah. With have the speed really is important for the operating system and the apps. Absolutely, that they're reading right there from it. And uh, I've included a link that'll be on the website techguylabs.com uh, that talks all about migration assistance. So oh, you'll good. be able to see. Oh, this is what I'm supposed yeah, to. Yeah, because you'll have to, to then copy. You'll have to then manually copy everything else. That the basically your home folder onto the external drive. You're going to put everything but the home folder on your on your internal drive. It's a little more complicated, actually. It's kind of advanced because. Um, you want the home folder on the internal drive, but you want it to refer to stuff that's on the external drive. You can do that with aliases if you want. Um, Apple, the Mac will handle that okay. It's probably not ideal to put the home folder. You can tell Apple, oh, you know, you have to do some advanced stuff. Yeah, that gets a little complicated. And you could tell it that your home folder is on the external drive, but I've been told by a number of people that's actually problematic because yeah. some apps assume that it's on the internal drive. Luckily, uh, you can, it, again, the migration assistant actually lets you break it down so you can sort of choose to have your user account put on there and then you just deselect some of those things. So you would deselect oh, you can. as an example. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. So there's a lot of granularity. Yeah, migration assistance gotten a lot better. Jane, call us when you get it, and uh, we'll talk again, and we can walk you through this. And I have to break because Scott Wilkinson's here. It's time for that home theater geek himself, Mr. Scott Wilkinson. He is a uh, he is a uh, well besides being an expert in all things big screen TV and surround sound, he is a podcaster. His show uh, spots by the AVS Forum is at YouTube.com/slash AVS forum in fact i heard you had a somebody a little bird said you had a wonderful show last week why thank you yes yes we did um the guest was uh, john carafin who's the ceo and co-founder of Lightfield lab oh which wow. we were talking about this years ago, a year ago well I think. months months, months ago, ago anyway. okay <laughs> <laughs> ages time ago flies. yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah he um he this company is doing a remarkable thing making true holographic displays and you know 3d has come and gone and the glasses are stupid and all that stuff you, <laughs> you, 
you know this so well. <laughs> yeah. I've but, I've been saying it since day one. Exactly, and you're right. It's it it you know it's not true 3D. It's fake 3D, but holography is true 3D. Now, normally we think of holograms as being based on lasers. You have to use lasers to make them, but you don't. Uh, and uh, Lightfield Lab uh, actually has a flat panel display that recreates exactly how light behaves in the 3D world. As we're out in the world looking, looking at stuff, light from the sun hits it, or maybe there's a light source. It reflects off of plants and cars and people and whatever and comes into our eye. And it comes in really from all different directions. And that, this is what uh, glasses-based 3D can't do. It's basically presenting each eye with a 2D image. But uh, with true holography, which Lightfield Lab is doing, it recreates the light beams coming from all different directions, just as it does in real life. And so as you move around a holographic object, uh, you can see different sides of it, and it looks exactly like it, it did in real life. So we had a wonderful discussion, hour-long discussion, explaining exactly how that works. And uh, I was so happy to see uh, a number of, of our own chat rumors in there. And So how does uh, it? Does it work well? I mean, you've... Oh, yeah. Seen oh, I've it? seen it. It's kind oh, of I a have. limited... I mean, the demo is in a limited environment, right? You... <clears throat> well, they're in their early stages of development, yes, know, but but there's a their their demo is a is a chameleon. I, I love how these technologies go from early stages of development to the dustbin so quickly. But okay, yes, okay, I'll I'll give I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. But not every single time. No, it's true. There are some technologies that go from early development to wow. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to remember. But okay, yeah, I'm sure that's happened. <laughs> there must be, it has happened. It has to have. Do you, you don't have to wear glasses for this? No, no. But no. tell me, so you've seen the chameleon. I have. Do you have to sit in a special seat? No, you can be anywhere. Anywhere in the room. In the room. Okay. Anywhere you anywhere you want. And you walk around it and and it actually uh, occludes physical objects behind it. That is it, there's enough light there that if there's something behind it, it blocks it. You does can't it, see it. Does it look a little ghost-like, or is it pretty no, solid? It's very solid. Okay. Wow. Okay. It's very solid. And, it's, and it's tell me how. Important. What's the process of making this hologram? <clears throat> well, it's pretty complicated. Uh, you have a bunch of light sources that go through a bunch of processing, and then through a very complex optical layer that has a lot of what are called nano lenses, tiny, tiny, tiny little lenses that shoot the light rays in the appropriate direction. So th do they think this will be a technology like um, you'll have in your home or you'll have in a theater Ultimately. or it will just be for specialized applications? Well, th they've got a whole rollout strategy and it's gonna start with uh, commercial applications uh, like as in um, Advertisements. 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 Oh, sure. telepresence. Sure. Okay. Telepresence. Yeah. Um, Google was tabletop. showing off something like that, mm -hmm. so your there's the your Zoom call would be more realistic. Tabletop. Yeah. So I could have Princess Leia standing on my tabletop yeah. going. We Help talked me, about Obi Wan Kenobi. We talked about home. the Princess Leia effect, and what's interesting is that could hap That could have happened. You remember it was. Luke and Obi Wan and R two D two throwing the the light onto a onto the floor who essentially. Who could forget? Or, yes. Who could forget? Yes. If that if the light source had been the table, that actually could happen. Oh. It it couldn't happen by R two D two throwing the light from a lens because you can't stop photons. That's basically what what it was. It was physically impossible uh, creating an image while stopping the photons in midair. But if the light source, if the image source had been the table shooting upward, you could actually see it. 
<laughs> so this was very interesting. It's er obviously it's early days, and you know, it's I very shouldn't, early. I days. shouldn't be skeptical. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, you've it, just had you've just had some disappointments I've been hurt. in the past. I've been hurt in the past. Yeah. You've been hurt in the past, and, and you want to be careful. Yeah, you want to protect yourself. My heart's yourself. been broken. Yeah, I, know, I have uh, I a Panasonic Viera in my house that. Behind it has two pairs of USB connected 3D glasses with about an inch of dust. I was going to say they must on be them. So never, yeah. never used. You know, and, yeah, and every yeah. once in a while the TV says, "Do you want to watch this in 3D?" And I say, "No." You say, "Heavens no!" I say, "Heavens I to say, Betsy." First no. of all, it's not 3D. You're just confused. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. If you ever get a chance, I really to come all the way this. down to San Jose. You, I'm going to send I, Micah. You send Micah. I'd be happy yeah. to meet him there, and yeah. I can set it up. As and, it turns out, he's going to be down there because he got an invitation to Apple's event next week. Oh, so. man. As it turns out, he might be that in that area, so maybe you uh, can well, do it. Well, if that's two, the case, maybe we'll set something up. A two-step. We, we'll, we'll, we'll chat after the show. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. So uh, this is cool. I mean, it's not something you're going to see. What's their time frame, do you think? Oh, probably in uh, for a home theater thing, at least five years. Yeah. And, but that's and it's way too early to speculate on cost, right? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. We don't know. Definitely, yeah. we don't know. They didn't say anything. No, no, no. You don't at this stage of the game. Yeah. But uh, in, in any event, do they have know, a lot of funding? Who's uh, who's behind? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They got a lot of funding. I don't know who's be. I don't know who has provided the funding. Venture capitalists, some some venture capitalists somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They got a lot of funding. Good. Good. And so, they're, well, it's intriguing, they're, isn't it? Yeah. It's um, very intriguing. You and it's, I have been talking for years about years. 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the whole um, history of the development of displays is to make it more and more like real life. And Correct. up to now, that's been higher resolution. So it's it's approaching and the HDR resolution of the now. eye. And it's yeah. been higher uh, quality lighting so that it's approaching yeah. the 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 you know the the bandwidth of the eye in terms yep. of brightness and darkness yep. the gamut yep. yep. uh, but one thing is still missing although i have to say when you get to really high quality 8k with hdr it feels 3d it feels it, it has a depth to it yeah, a bit yeah. yeah it's true but that's the one thing you know like uh, it, well, is the world we look at 3D? I mean, we kind absolutely. of know it is. Oh, absolutely. That's a good point, though, because it's sort of... There's nothing you can't simulate in 2D. Yeah. Huh. Like, moving my head, I know that, you know, because of yeah, perspective... Yeah, what is 3D? What is 3D? <laughs> You've got 30 seconds. <laughs> i got 30 seconds. What is 3D? Well, again, it is light coming at you from many different directions. Uh, as in the real world. two eyes. Yeah. yeah. As in the real world. You know, it's like 3D sound. Sound is coming at you from all different directions. Yeah. It yeah. hits your two ears. Good. And the, your brain sorts it out and says, oh, it, the sound is coming from over there. Your brain sorts the visual out and says, oh, the, the light's coming from over there. You did that in less than 30 seconds? I'm impressed. Now, <laughs> tell us what love is and you've got... F <laughs> oh, no, sorry. T we're out of time. <laughs> Too late. Scott Wilkinson, Home Theater Geek, YouTube.com slash AVS Forum. There's infinite universes. Uh, all right, you want to talk to the peeps, or do you got to get going here? No, no, I'm I, I'm home. I'm ready to talk. I'm home, he says. Home yeah. is where the heart is. Yep, I am going back out in September. I, I won't miss a show, but um, Harmon has invited some journalists down to L.A. to see their latest and greatest. Nice. So I'm going to be doing that. Good. And uh, I did want to mention, I'll mention to the peeps uh, here in the chat room and on, on the stream that uh, I just posted a home theater of the month. Oh, yeah. fun. Those it's a fun. really, really good one. Fun, fun. And uh, what's cool about it is it's ex it's almost exactly the way I would do it. See, look, and this, is, it's the, this is like in, the, in with the chameleon. See, it's floating around. Let's <laughs> <laughs> play on the chameleon. Yeah, let's play the chameleon, bring in the time, and now watch as the time goes through. Floats around the chameleon. Ooh. Ooh. See, it's including the chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, look, you know, the, the, that chameleon is completely holographic. 
but it is occluding actual objects behind it. Right, but it's kind of sparkly. It's not like it's eh, okay. So it's a little sparkly. Yeah, it's not well, quite the resolution of the rest of the world. It looks like uh, kind of uh, uh, Princess Leia. I mean, it looks like it's kind yeah. of uh, right. artificial. Yeah. Well, yeah. But whereas a 4K TV has 8 million pixels and an 8K TV has 33 million pixels, yeah. Cami has several billion. Like 10 billion. Yeah, that's pixels. kind of amazing. Yeah. And that's just that's just one little thing coming from one little panel. And then ultimately you can scale that because the panel is tileable. So you can just put a bunch of them together. <laughs> And make a wall-sized display. Wow. For $30 billion. Well, well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, will yeah. come first, micro-LED or 3D? Oh, micro-LED will come first because it's already here. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can buy a micro-LED display right. today. And right. you, you know, you spend close to a million bucks on it. Right. And it's 2D. Right. But it's it's wonderful. It's incredible. Uh, that's going to be the next thing. Yeah. Af after QD OLED. Did they, have they solved the um, issue with the borders? Because I remember the tile borders. It was problematic. Really? Did you? Well, it dep in some cases you can see those borders with some lighting or some imagery. Like, for example, space scenes, dark space yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah. You can sometimes see those borders. Yeah. Um, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. And some are better than others. Right. Um, I figured Sony I'm not going to... LED? I'm not going to get a big screen until uh, such time... Such time as, as it I becomes... Can, I can have it in my... To replace the the To replace projector. the high sense. Yes. yes. The next... But speaking of which, the next... Um, podcast which is september 6th is going to be some of the people from the ust shootout which i spoke about the oh, last nice. time i was on nice. the show yes we'll, we'll get deep we'll get deep into that deep man deep, good man. good do you want to stay for the top of the hour happy to do so oh aren't you nice aren't you kind i'm always happy to do so when <laughs> i can yes thank you scott yes you bet our show today brought to you by UserWay. Let me tell you, uh, we use UserWay now at twit.tv, our website. If you, if you go there, look in the lower right-hand corner. There's the UserWay logo, the accessibility logo. Click that, and you'll see why we use, use UserWay. Every website is required to be accessible by the Americans with Disability Act. Uh, the UserWay's incredible AI-powered solution tirelessly enforces... All of the web content accessibility guidelines, these are the very critical guidelines, WCAG they call it, that make your site accessible. And of course, once you learn that you have to do it, you might be saying, oh gosh, but can I afford to? Yes. Yes. You don't need a whole team of engineers. In fact, in, in just a few seconds, UserWay's AI can achieve more than an entire team of developers can in months. It is, I understand, it was for me too, anybody who has a site, it's overwhelming to make your site accessible. The good news is UserWay solutions make it simple, easy, and cost-effective. You can even use, even use their free scanning tool. If you go there right now, userway.org slash twit, see if your site's ADA compliant. And if you have an enterprise-level website with thousands of pages, they're there for you. They've got a managed solution. Their team can handle everything for you. That's why some of the biggest sites in the world use UserWay, Coca-Cola, eBay, Disney, FedEx, and now those powerful enterprise level tools are available very affordably for us small websites. In fact, as little as $49 a month on the monthly plan. You'll be ADA compliant, which means you'll be legal. You'll reach more customers. That's important. You'll build loyalty. And we're going to get you 30% off too. 1 billion people in the world with disabilities, 13% of the population. They want to use your site. They often can't unless you use UserWay. Just ask Siri. The voice of Siri, Susan Bennett, what she thinks about user Hi, way. I'm Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. You won't hear me say something like this too often. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're looking for. But every day, that's what the Internet is like for millions of people with disabilities. UserWay fixes all of that with just one line of code. 
A simple line of JavaScript and your site is accessible. That's what we did. Take a look at our site. Uh, fixes image tags, does it all for you. Works easily with WordPress, Shopify, Wix, Sitecore, SharePoint, and more. Let UserWay help your business meet its compliance goals, improve the experience for your users. They can make any website fully accessible and, good news, ADA compliant. And with UserWay, everyone who visits your site can browse seamlessly and customize it to fit their needs. A great way to showcase your brand's commitment to millions of people with disabilities. If you go right now to userway.org slash twit, I promised you 30% off. Yep, 30% off UserWay's AI-powered accessibility solution. Book a short call, talk to them, get their accessibility guide. They're there to help. UserWay, making the internet accessible for everyone. And that's something I can really get behind. Userway.org slash twit. Thank you, user way. And now, back to the programmy. <laughs> Every time I hear whistling in a song, I can I imagine the whistler like he's getting ready to do his solo, like the band's playing, and he's licking his lips. <laughs> he's getting ready. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I yeah, just, you think I can, they, they might have to have, to have some special... Yeah, maybe some chapstick. chapstick on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of leaked it. I guess I might as well uh, refer to it. Apple's event, September 7th. Uh, they sent out an invitation that looked like... I don't know. I said far out. Far out. It showed stars. Mm -hmm. Night galaxy. Yeah, I don't know because, of course, I didn't get one. But you got one. I'm glad to see that. It, it was, um, yeah, I was a little uh, shocked. I did you get it in your email, or did they did a courier deliver it to your door? <laughs> yeah, someone knocked on my door. They yes. they whistled a yeah. little tune, and then they gave no. Um, it was actually a, a, a somebody else who covers Apple was saying, "Oh, the event uh, announcement is out," and I was used to getting the one in my email that says like, oh, tune in to yeah, yeah. The, the live show. Don't you wish you could watch this in person? Right. No. And so I just read I didn't even get that, quick. by the way. I just want to point oh. out, I got nothing. Maybe they didn't do that this time. I've been searching my email forlornly oh. <laughs> for the last uh, four or five days. Just... It's okay, you know. Honestly, I would stay here anyway because uh, we have to we have to do our snarky yeah, thing. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have you go down. You know why it's good to go down? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, I thought it was very interesting. The invite said at the Steve Jobs Theater. Yes. Yeah. So indoors, as opposed to the last event, which was held outside. Mm -hmm. They're which doing is some interesting. They're doing some. Um, COVID stuff. Uh, I've got to be tested, I think, up oh, to three days. Oh, they told days. you. Ah. Yeah, up to three days before. you got to be test negative. prove that I'm negative. So you have to have a letter the, yeah. from, the, from your principal. And, and says, they're working with you know a company to uh, do all of the okay, behind-the-scenes stuff there. Right, good. Um, There's a big gap, by the way. I just want to point out, 72 hours. It's easy to catch COVID. I know. Right after that yeah. test, three days later, give it to everybody at the event. So. Yeah. I'm I'm planning on doing test mine, the day of the, the exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to to be safe and I I don't know I that's all I know about that I don't know if they want you know tests from your doctor versus at home tests or how that all works so there's a I won't find that out until closer. for the cruise we you do a proctored test so you get on a, 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 a like a Zoom call and they watch you <laughs> stick the thing up your nose and then and then they say okay fine put the test where we can see it. Oh wow! So and, they just watch it they, the whole time. Well, they what they they go away, but they record. So you're using your phone, and they record the 15 minutes, and then they can scan through it to see if you touched it, changed it, did anything oh. at the end, and then you show them the result, and then you get a, you get you get an official email or something. Interesting. So Apple's going to announce. We pretty sure the iPhone 14. They don't say ahead of time. No, no. I had some I had some interesting thoughts because one of the stories this week, and we'll get to the phones again and I'm sorry, I, I just I thought we should talk about this. Uh, is that T-Mobile is going to start using SpaceX Starlink for a satellite to cell phone connection sometime next year. And there's been this rumor for some time that Apple would put a satellite connection into its phone. So when I saw this space picture and I saw the title Far Out, I, I thought, I wonder if they're indicating subtly that maybe there'll be satellite connectivity in the phone this year. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. Another was that they would have improved night photography. Yeah. Um, 
Although I have to say, now that I'm looking at the video that Apple sent out, it could also be that they've invented a new kind of fizzy tablet that looks like an <laughs> apple that you drop in water. An effervescent tablet. An effervescent. Yeah. It could be just like the new Pepto Biz. I, I don't know. It's. Uh, I mean, because it it could be stars, but it also could be bubbles. I'm just saying. Yeah, I the sort of reading into the the invite the is always a lot of fun. Yes. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I we'll have to see well, how much I'm, of it is. I'm tied thrilled to that you're going to go. And at the event, not only do you get to be in the Steve Jobs Theater, which is you know, each seat is fourteen thousand dollars. So be gentle, okay? I will do my best, uh, please. But you get to test out the equipment afterwards. They have a demo room. That's the big thing. And of course, that's where uh, you will learn if it's a as bad a fingerprint magnet as your as, uh, this. as your air Oh my word! Yeah, Mac, the patina of fingerprints. Yeah. yeah. The YouTube star Marquez Brownlee noted that at the demo thing. Yeah, right in June. then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I expect you to report back. I will do my best to find the fingerprint magnet of the phones. We don't know what colors they'll be, that kind of thing, yeah. um, and get a chance to to chat with the folks and ask them questions. So, so that is coming up a week from Tuesday, and uh, that following Saturday, two weeks from today, Micah will have the hands on for whatever Apple announces. That's pretty exciting. Back to the phones we go here. Uh, Alan in Simi Valley, California. Did you get an invitation, Alan? Because I think everybody but me got an invitation. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, good. But I don't, but other than my phone, I don't own any Apple equipment. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Apple's always thought, well, once you get the phone, we got you. But no, 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 no. Alan is no fool. What, <laughs> what can we do for you, Alan? Well, I bought a new computer. Yes. Dell. Yes. And, uh, uh, w with uh, Windows 11, and I have spent uh, days trying to stop these pop-ups telling me, <laughs> let's get you set up and ready to use Microsoft Teams. <laughs> and the one thing I found that worked in, in any way was to totally wipe out all cookies, um, and then these, seem, these pop-ups seem to have stopped, but then uh, various uh, things like Chrome says, "Oh, well, you can't log in without without cookies." Oh, on. you're so you're so out of luck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, believe me, if you're using Chrome, uh, Microsoft's going to nudge you every single time, saying, "You know, Edge is a better browser. Edge is a better browser. Edge is a better browser. Would you like to install Edge? It's a better browser." Microsoft yeah. has gotten to be uh, nudgy. Nudge is a good word. Very nudgy. So, what does he do, uh, Micah? Is there any way to? I haven't gotten as many as uh, this I is think suggesting. at some point. <laughs> first of all, one thing you could do is uninstall Teams. I think if you do that, it probably well, goes I did away. That. And it's I still did that. and they still urge you. And it still it still comes up like like right now on the screen. It's it, it's saying start a quick call just by sharing a oh. link. Let's get you set up, oh. ready to use Microsoft Teams. All right, leave that up there. You're looking at that right now. Yes, I am. Okay, so and Microsoft does this. Some has done this before with a dark, what we call dark patterns. So the big obvious button is okay. Let's go. Right? Yeah. Are there any other buttons or even text that you could click on that screen? Well, certainly up in the. There's no X in the upper. There's no X. Right. Okay. Okay. And uh, the only button I see is the one that says continue. There's nothing else. There's no. There's no like in fine print at the bottom. No, I never want to see this again. Go away. Anything like that. Nothing like that. Oh, you know? that is that is offensive. Well, it is. I'm 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 sort of sitting here thinking. Oh. Well, I guess I'm going back to Windows 10 for now. No, yeah. I mean, I have Windows 11, and I no longer see that. I can't remember uh -huh. what I did. I might have just said. I just might. Have, there must be. There a way is to close a setting uh, called Get Tips, Tricks, and Suggestions ah, as you use Windows. Yeah. If you turn that setting off. Uh, called Get Tips, Tricks, and Suggestions. It seems to be uh, you launch the settings app, you go into notifications and actions, and deep underneath the notifications area, there is a setting that says Get Tips, Tricks, and Suggestions as you use Windows. If you untoggle that, then it should uh, stop teams from being suggested to something. And, and incidentally, while you're doing that, <laughs> yeah. you might want to remove ads as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought I had done that, but I've been bouncing around so much that, you know, it, it, it gets... Uh, so you could turn off personalize your lock screen, 
because that's another get fun facts, tips, tricks, and more on your lock screen. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so just doing what you said, Micah, I think still leaves it on the lock screen. Oh, no. So you have to go to personalization and lock screen and uncheck the get the fun facts, tips, tricks, and more on your lock screen. You can also, in the start menu, remove ads. I tell you what, let's put a big, long article for Windows Central on how to turn off as many of these as possible, because I find this extraordinarily annoying. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. More calls right after this. So annoying. And, uh, you know, Windows 10 is going to do it, too. It, going back to Windows 10 in the long run probably won't make a difference. This is, this is the new Microsoft, Alan. This is just, this is just what they want to do. The worst thing that they started doing, we were talking about this on Windows Weekly, is there's ads in Outlook, but now they're making the ads look like email. Oh, no. Yeah. Sort of native yeah. advertising. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. Where's this uh, Windows Central? So I'm going to paste this in. I'm just opening up chat now. I don't know why it was. I had it open. I must have closed it by accident. So where would you said Oops, you were to post an article? Where would I look for that? Uh, techguylabs.com. I posted the wrong link, though. Sorry. I'm going to click that again. Uh, at techguylabs.com, this is episode 1921. There will be um, links there from the shows. And definitely dis disabling the ads, disabling the tips, tricks, and features. <laughs> Disable all you can, it kind of is the yeah. rule. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I kind of went through and tried to... Uh... <sighs> Unfortunately, they've got them in so many places, it could be that a few of those got missed. Well, that's what I thought was interesting. So you talked about how to remove that tips, tricks, and help with features. But it didn't get rid of it on the lock screen. That's a separate setting because, you know, they, they really want you to have to do this. In, in They'd a, rather you keep it on. <laughs> they'd much, much prefer. Um, yeah, it's very frustrating. Um, I, I, uh, I, it's not like they're not making any money. I don't, well, yeah. I don't understand the, the need for this, you know. We bought the, you got us. We bought it. We're using it. Yeah. Oh, dear. Anyway, okay. thank you, Alan. Okay. Uh, are you, do you have time for a wow from me? Yes, give me a wow. Okay. Uh, local uh, public library in Thousand Oaks is slowly disposing of their CD collection. Oh, wow. I, I, <laughs> I picked up a, a great record with uh, stuff going back to 1949, 1950. And it says on it how, and it says on it that these recordings were, you know, enhanced using the feeder system. And it's brilliant. Like, it really sounds... What's uh, the feeder system? Do you know what that is, Scott? Have you heard of that? The feeder? No. How, how, well, how's it spelled? F-E-E-D-E-R? No, feeder. C-E-D-A-R, like the tree. Cedar. Oh, yeah. And that, you know yeah, that's that? A audio rest, that's an audio restoration program. I've heard of that. That's right. That's right. And, and they sound good, huh? I, I was really impressed. Yeah, this is... this is Yeah, noise uh, reduction and pop pop removal, that sort of thing. Because these were probably originally records. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. There's also a cool thing that you interviewed a guy, Scott, used on tapes. Like Miles Davis' Kind of Blue is recorded on reel-to-reel -reel tapes. He, mm -hmm. he used the bias tone in the tapes to eliminate wow and flutter, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some interesting stuff being done to get this old stuff back. Sounding good. Yeah. 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 So this is a very young Victoria de Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow. Did you hear, speaking of this, did you hear that, that they just recently released some Selena tracks in which they aged... Her voice. Oh, that's weird. Selena Gomez. No, no, Selena. Oh, the 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 uh, uh, text. Not yeah. Text she text. she was murdered. I remember her. She, yeah. yeah, I oh, think dear. so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they 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 had a bunch of unreleased track. No, no, I take it back. It was it was classic the, tracks. The Queen of Tejano music. Tejano. That's the word I was thinking. Yeah. Exactly. And they they released a bunch of her tr classic tracks. <sighs> But they aged yeah, her she, voice as, she, as, she, as if she was, you know, thir 20 years she older. She died at, at 23. Yeah. Murdered in Corpus Christi. And yeah. so we'll never know what she sounded would sound like now. Right. How interesting. But they, tr they tried to simulate that. And her family okayed it. 
and her fans are all up in arms. I just heard this on the radio yesterday. Yeah. Uh, her fans are all up in arms of, what are you doing? Yeah. That's ridiculous. And they, what they did really was EQ her voice. The yeah, I tracks. think that is kind of silly. Yeah. It's silly. But I yeah, like what? the idea that you could use Cedar and other technologies to get these recordings these as, old as recordings good as back. possible. Because that's all, there's never going to come back, right? Right. Yeah, Miles won't be recording Kind of Blue anytime soon. <laughs> he's, he's playing it up in heaven. That's right. That's right. Well, Alan, I appreciate it. That was a good wow. Thank you. Great. Have a Thank great day. Thanks for your advice. Take care. So. Scotty, you've got four I, minutes and 45 seconds. I thank you, Captain. So, hello, everybody. Um, let's see. iTech says, late to chat, but if done right, like Avatar 3D, especially in IMAX, I think is great. A lot of people like it. I wish uh, I'd seen Top Gun Maverick in IMAX. Yeah, that probably would have been. We awesome. watched it last night on our, you know, big screen close up with good sound, and it was amazing in, in uh, HD. I haven't it's seen a beautiful it. Beautiful movie. Yeah, and actually surprisingly good. I thought it wasn't bad at all, but uh, I would have loved to have seen it in IMAX because the the flight stuff I heard oh, was incredible. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have not been back to the theater. Me neither. In, 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 since pandemic time, um, sadly. And now I'm not close to uh, to a good Dolby Cinema or an IMAX. Got to go up to San Jose for that. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to see if I can see if I can make if if I'll, I'll Mike I'll talk to you uh, off stage here and see if uh, we can meet up in San Jose and you can see Cammy. Um, hey, loquacious! Always great to see you. Um, Web 7350, have you received the new soundbar yet? Yes, I have. And I will be talking about it on an upcoming show right here. The Vizio M-Series Elevate. And so far, I'm very impressed. Very impressed. I'm liking it a lot. But I will tell you more later. Hey, Compter. Uh, Gumby, yes, exit stage left. Um, let's see. Uh, Tabla, nice screen name. Uh, what streaming service is the best quality to watch Top Gun Maverick? Well, I mean, I think it's, isn't it only on one streaming service? I don't know which one it is. I can't imagine that it's on multiple streaming services. So, uh, it, it is what it is. Um... Stimson, what type of camera setup is needed to capture 3D effect to display on a display? Well, if you're talking about uh, <clears throat> conventional 3D, that is where you have to wear glasses, uh, you need two cameras separated by the distance, the average distance between two eyeballs. Um, that's what you need. For volumetric capture, for the capture that you would use with this new Lightfield Lab solid light technology, uh, you need a lot more. <laughs> you need cameras all over the place to capture all the different light rays that come off of an object in all different directions so that when you walk around it, it will change its perspective as if you're looking at a real object. Now, there are such capture rooms. Obviously, it's very difficult to do outdoors, um, but you can do it in a room um, but you need cameras basically all over the room to do it. So that's a little tricky. Uh, Beatmaster, uh, did the Lightfield Lab guy, uh, oh, what did he think about pets? You know, we, I think we actually talked about that, of, of making a hologram of your pet that had passed away. And so you could have a, you could, you could live with your pet even though they were gone. Uh, which was an interesting idea, I thought. Um, I can't. So many things go wrong at home that displaying holographic material and dogs and cats jumping at it. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. That you have a hologram in your house and the and the dog and the cat try to interact with it. That we didn't talk about. It's a very interesting question. I hadn't thought of that before. But we did talk about holographically 
resurrecting your pet. <laughs> uh, yeah, Beatmaster. Um, that's I, I didn't understand at first, but now I do. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. I wanted a dumb TV, Strengths says. So I bought a 48-inch computer monitor. Yeah, computer monitors are dumb. Thank you, Scotty. My pleasure. See you next week. Well, hello. Hey. <laughs> no, that's not going to work either. I'm trying new, you know, new things. It's fun to try new things. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> hey there. I'm Leo Laporte. Yeah, that's not going to work either. I'm hey, hey, hey. How about that? How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk with Micah Sargent, your tech guy too. Talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that stuff, all that jazz. All 88, that jazz. 88, ask Leo. Jazz hands. Uh... <laughs> Everybody dance now. Oh, I, I, oh, my computer's... It said no. I was going to play that. No sound said for no you. No sound effects. <laughs> no. Uh, let's go back to the phone. I thought that was a wallpaper, but no, that's just a video. 88 ask leo is the phone number. And on the line, it's Joey from San Diego. Hello, Joey. Hey, Leo. How you, bro? How you doing, bro? We're great. How are you, sir? I'm glad to see you got Michael Sargent there. You got some young people there. Finally, right? <laughs> Finally got some young blood in the house. All, old people. all these old people. <laughs> what could Leo know? What could he know about anything? He's not a TikToker. Hey, I can't laugh at you, Leo. I can't laugh at you. <laughs> What's up, hey, Joe? Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned Top Gun, Leo. I, I oh, man. It's in, I it takes place sure. in Coronado, right? Yeah, Just but you know what? The they can never replace the original, Leo. I thought it... Okay, so I watched Top There's Gun Maverick original. last night. Oh, There's an original. There Micah Sargent. I didn't realize... Micah I, hold on. Sargent. T time out. I thought that you were saying that Top Gun alone was a replacement for an even no, no, no. earlier Top Gun. Yeah, Shogun. I understand the Top Gun Maverick. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk, Top Gun and then the Maverick, which just came out. Uh, by the way, speaking of old folks... Tom Cruise, 60 years old, but looks great, can fly like a demon. The funny thing about Maverick is it's the plot of Star Wars. <laughs> really? But other than that, right? Yeah. Right? Because they have to fly down the trench and then drop the bomb right, right in the hole in the oh, the that, vent. Wow. <laughs> it's like but you uh, know what? You know what, Leo, Leo, Leo. I don't know if you felt this way, but I felt they screwed up. They had to put Kelly McGillis in the movie somewhere. Right? I know. I was a little disappointed. Somewhere. They got Jennifer Conley as the love interest the instead. Movie. She was the first. I completely movie, agree. You know? I completely agree. She was the movie. They were. They were both hey, good uh, movies. Hey, I got a quick joke for you, Leo. I got a quick. Okay, joke. Joey. You're not gonna like this. It's a, it's a political joke, Leo. Oh. It's, uh, I'm going to say, the, another name for the uh, January 6th committee is a committee to, to prevent Donald Trump from running in 2024. <laughs> that's not a joke. I think that's true. I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a... And some people would not laugh. Joey, did you have a computer question? <laughs> no, I don't. I got <laughs> Well, I'm going to move on then, because there are people who do. I thought you wanted to ask about Teslas. Do, you don't want to ask... Uh, I do. Oh, 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 that's I like do. a computer question. That Tesla is a computer. But I, but I, you know, I want to talk to you too. But <laughs> I know, I know. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's I just do. the Leo and Joey chat fest, nobody's going to listen to that. I wish no, they we would. Can't be doing that. That'd be but you know what, Joey? Time. When I retire, I'll tell you where my bench is. You can come sit next to me. We'll talk. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm in San Diego. We'll do it right by the where the sailor and the and the nurse are kissing. Right by the okay, yeah, okay. Hey, Leo, right quick, I just wanted your opinion on the Tesla because I'm thinking about getting. Ah. I quit with gas cars. I quit. Good for you. you. So is the state of California. Say, you're 2035. Yeah. Um, so I've had a Tesla. I had a Model X. I currently have a Ford Mach E. We are an all electric family. Uh, my wife drives a uh, Mini Cooper uh, S uh, electric, and our 19 year old has a Chevy Bolt. Love all three of them. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Tesla. Every Tesla owner I talk to loves the Tesla. I so, took a test drive and I was blown away. The, I think the first thing I would say is 
everybody loves electric vehicles generically the first time because there's thing about things about an electric that is different from a gas vehicle chiefly that the electric engine has 100% torque from the moment you touch the pedal what does that mean it means uh, there's you know when you push the pedal on a gas car there's a little bit of a lag you know it has to build up an electric vehicle instant torque and that's why it can pin your head to the back of the back of the seat uh, and that's why they have such fast zero to 60 times they have race car fast zero to 60 times depending on your tesla it might be as fast as four seconds zero to 60 miles an hour so right. i mean you're never going to use that but but that but that's the well, what, what people, thing too, Leo, I'm an old per I'm an old person, Leo. I just want to drive from A to B. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. So know, that's the other thing people like about electric. Uh, there's no basically electric uh, motors are maintenance free. You still have to bring it in to sure. rotate the tires because rubber wears, and to make sure your fluids are uh, are topped off, things like that. But I, you know, hey, that's hey, Leo. Yeah. How, how much does it cost to charge you from at home? I mean, we're, well, we that, that this is ball okay. Ball so this is a good ball charging ball. is the good question. A lot of people ask, first of all, range, how far can you get? What are you going to do when you get to the end of the tank and you're not at home? Most people don't drive that much day to day. So they charge at home. Uh, then the question is, well, how much is that going to cost? And in California, we have very expensive electricity, right, Joey? Uh, so yeah. you should contact uh, your local electric company many of them have special rates for ev owners oh. uh of course they, the ev give you a special rate at midnight yeah see. well that's fine because you don't care about that the ev i we are our peak hours up here in northern california is 4 p.m to 9 p.m it's probably something similar for you as well because people go to bed and then they don't need as much electricity so i just tell the car do not charge between 4 and 9 p.m we have solar panels so we're generating, in effect, generating our own electricity. So, but that's a, that's a big expense. So, not everybody will have solar panels. But I would say, especially with gas as expensive it is as it is, the, the, the chances are it's going to be very similar to the cost of driving a gas vehicle, and probably less over the life of the vehicle due to a number of things like maintenance. Um, so I, I think there, I think, you know, this is something you have to look at your own rates, call your own electric company to find out. But I, my, my experience has been, uh, it's cost us very little to keep those three cars now really charged. And, uh, it sure is nice not to stop at the gas station. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, so I think that I understand the issues people have, frankly, with electric vehicles. There's concern about what the burden will be on the grid. Uh, there's, but people don't drive as much as they maybe they think they do. If you, you know, I if you commute to work back and forth, I think that's probably the, you know, most of the time, and that means you're going to charge at night. So it means you can always have a full tank every morning. I don't, I don't want to proselytize for electric vehicles, but I put my money where my mouth is. I think Teslas are very good. Um, I'm not, I didn't want a model three because I didn't, I like more controls. I like buttons, knobs, dials, you know, and the model three moves a lot of those onto the screen. So just, but I think the model three is a great car. A lot of people like it. It's funny. I, my, my last checkup with my physician, we go through all the things. He says, turn your head, cough, the whole thing. And then he says, Hey, I got a question for you. Should I get a Tesla or a Mach-E? <laughs> so I gave him the same speech I'm giving you. I, I stopped buying Teslas because I was concerned about the company. I was concerned about repairs. Uh, at the time, this was a couple of years ago, they were having a hard time getting extra parts. Uh, I also wanted to buy a car from a car company. And Ford's a car company. Yes. Uh, as Sam Abel, Sam, our car guy, calls them a metal bender. And uh, I think there were certain advantages to getting it from a car company. They didn't have the experience, though that uh, Tesla has. Tesla's got a lot of experience building electric vehicles and they are the number, they're not number one anymore, the number two electric vehicle seller in the U.S. So the number one is a company in China. Really? Yeah. They are the number one in California, right? Oh, yeah. Well, and, uh, up here in Northern California, every third <laughs> car is a Tesla. That's true. So, uh, certainly Tesla owners love them. I just think that Tesla owners love them is often because it's their first electric vehicle and that love really would spread to almost any electric vehicle they're right they're really fun to drive i've never driven one 
Oh, yeah. See, I have to test drive. I'll, I'll throw you the uh, oh, keys. Oh, no. I'm not driving your, yeah. your electric vehicle sure. ever. Sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I used to take, fans would come to the studio. I used to take them for uh, rides in the Tesla in the, uh, in the insane mode. Oh, I would you, ride with you in it. I just. It, yeah, it I funny. stopped doing it because, like Top Gun, I almost blacked out. Because you're there's so much the G's you're, you're pinned against the <laughs> and I just I thought if I black out this could be bad that could be very so bad. I stopped doing that yeah uh, but uh, a couple of our fans know eighty eight <laughs> anyway uh, Joey you did a test drive you, and you enjoyed it yes I did yeah it's a little yeah. it's more electric vehicles start out a little more expensive because you have to buy the batteries although the the Bolt uh, very inexpensive. After the rebates, we got our Chevy Bolt for twenty grand. Really, and it's been a great vehicle with great range. It's a uh, the, the kid loves it. It's a great first vehicle. So I, th right, I, right. I I think they're great. Man, I yeah, and you know you mentioned that you you bought, you stopped buying the Tesla too because they had parts problems. Yeah, I don't know. That was probably around the time too when they lost the billion dollars in the one quarter. Too, yeah, or almost. I think they I think they've turned the corner on that. I love their model. I think the negative of buying the Ford yeah. was you go through dealers. Dealers are awful. Are they don't know how to fix the car? Um, you know, people say I keep getting um you know every three months. An oil change <laughs> certificate from my dealer. They don't understand. I don't have oil, dude. I don't need an oil change. Uh, you know, I think dealers have a way to go uh, to get up to speed to EVs. Tesla, obviously, that's all they've ever sold. So the, the, you're going to get, I think they know more. Uh, so there's a, I, the buying experience was fantastic with Tesla. And uh, and they were very responsive. Anytime I had a problem, sometimes the the twelve volt battery there is a there is a traditional car volt battery, lead acid battery in the car, uh, died very early on on the Tesla, six months in I think, and they sent a guy out in a truck, replaced it, didn't have to go anywhere, they didn't, didn't have to pay anything. That was that was a good experience. So then there were weird things like hmm. the Model X. <laughs> Tesla's a little strange. They designed the front and back tires to be different, so you can't rotate the tires. <laughs> now, that's a dumb move, right? That's a very dumb move. And a car company would never have done that. But Tesla, you know, plus they have some strange features. Uh, you can annoy pedestrians with uh, flatulence. Uh, the kid loved it when he was younger. The turn signal, instead of going click, click, went... Oh, that's <laughs> was kind of disgusting. Hey, hey, Leo. <laughs> yes. But, but Leo, the cars drive themselves. I don't care what nobody says. They do yeah, not drive themselves, drive. Joey. I want you to, <laughs> I don't I don't want you to trust that car. Hey, it, drive. You, as soon as you get one, you will know. Hey. Hey Leo, you could but you could buy a gadget. You put on the steering wheel. I know. To, I know. There are people who love those things. Uh but you still trust me. Don't relax your vigilance. Self-driving vehicles at some point, we'll try to do something bad, and you've got to be there to go, whoop, nope, not that way. Uh, there's a curve I know on Highway 101 every time I drive down, and it, it, it just fooled the Tesla for some reason, and it would try to pull into the median, you know, and run into the concrete. And, of course, I knew it, so I'd keep my hands, and I'd say, no, no, I'd gently nudge it back into the lane. <laughs> the other thing is it had a lane-changing feature, and it would always, it was very aggressive. And I feel like it was cutting the cars off, so I, I stopped using that. And then one little problem, and I th this probably is fixed, but Tesla, uh, and I've heard others report this, the car has built-in features to stop you from running into stuff, but sometimes it sees things that aren't there. So you're suddenly, like the me. brakes get jammed on, and that's not good. So, yeah, I, they look, they, uh, Elon is a huckster. He's a marketing guru. He's the P.T. Barnum of our era, <laughs> and uh, he's overselling the capabilities because it's good for marketing. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. Micah and Leo are here to answer your calls. After the show, I'm giving you the keys. You've got to drive an electric vehicle, Michael, at least once in your life. <laughs> More calls after this. Why don't you go now? <laughs> Driving your car. Why don't you go now? Come on, no. man. It's insured. I would consider putting it around the, the parking lot. Well, yeah. That's yeah, okay. That's a start. That's a start. That's a start. I didn't know the Bolt was so affordable. Yeah. Um, 
so the median for an electric vehicle is like 59,000. But that, that really fools you because that's the median. Yeah. The Bolt is a great deal. Yeah, we're going to have Mike a live stream <laughs> as he as he drives down the road. Why are you why do you not want to Look at that. An F150 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds and it only burns a gallon of gas to do it. That's amazing. Oh, I thought that Biggie was talking about the He doesn't new have the lightning, lightning, I don't think. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that reminds me of uh when I uh Uber, I had to Uber and a Tesla showed up and I didn't know how to get into the car. <laughs> I was like, what do I do with the handle? And it's like, you have to push on the side of it. Okay. It's got the I was like waving in front of for it. For aerodynamics, they don't want it. any gaps in the panel. So it's flush. Yeah. Yeah. You press it, it goes, I don't like that either. So, but goofy. of course, the Ford is even weirder. It's just a dot. You touch the dot. See, there's no. Oh hand my God! Yeah. There's no handles. There's no handles at no, all. No handles. What does the does it have some mechanism that pops it out? What if that mechanism dies? Well, you see, the front door has a little uh, a little mini. Oh, okay, so you do have a little thing handle. that you could pull on. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, uh, these things are very uh, dependent on their circuitry. Yeah, that's the that's the <laughs> troubling thing. Uh, to but me. I mean, some of the modern cool vehicles are kind have. of too, modern. Modern nice vehicles are too, really. Yeah, I mean, that's I, my uh, my vehicles from two thousand four. And I, oh yeah, you you don't even have seatbelts, do you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In fact, I have to uh, go and dig up some dinosaur bones every morning in order to power it. Um, oh, you have the Mister Fusion. Uh, version. <laughs> I do. That's good. That's nice. <laughs> no, I uh, I love electric vehicles. I'll never drive anything else. And Lisa feels the same way. Even though you know she's had some interesting challenges with. Yeah, her. she has. But it's been but fine. She's still sticking with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think fine. that speaks to how much she likes it. The Tech Guy Show is brought to you by, quite literally, Cashfly. When you download our show, when you subscribe to our podcast, you're getting it from our content delivery network. Cashfly is amazing. And I can tell you that because we've been using them for more than a decade. They they actually saved our life. Twit wouldn't exist. Our podcast network wouldn't exist if Cashfly hadn't come along and said, we can do it. Now they're doing something so cool. They're ultra low latency video streaming. Latency less than a second. You can go live in hours, not days. It's if if you've been using WebRTC or some other lousy solution, ditch it for their WebSocket live video workflow. It scales to millions of users. Wow, wow! Cashfly has fifty plus locations, servers, points of presence. They call them around the globe. So that means your content's always closer to your users, no matter where they are. Uh, with Cashfly's storage optimization system, which we have been using for some time, you could take a load off your Origin servers, reduce your Origin bills, your S3 bills, by putting your stuff on Cashfly, which means your cash hit ratio suddenly is 100%. And if you need help, they've got fully managed solutions. That's what we use also. We don't want to think about it. Their elite managed packages give you VIP treatment, 24-7 support, response times in less than an hour. And they're always on top of what's going on with their network. The good news is we don't really ever have to use it. It's never been a problem in 10 years. So what do you get with Cashfly Ultra Low Latency Video Streaming? Can deliver video with less than a second latency to more than a million concurrent users. If you're doing games, lightning fast gaming delivers downloads faster, zero lag, glitches, or outages. Uh, if you've got a website with Cashfly, their mobile content optimization offers automatic, simple image optimization, which means your site loads faster on any device. They've got multiple CDNs for redundancy and failure. They intelligently balance your traffic across multiple providers, so you get the shortest routes, mitigates against performance glitches, and it works so well that over the last 12 months, 100% availability. 100% availability. Cashfly, 10 times faster than traditional methods, they're on six continents. They're 30% faster than other major CDNs with a 98% cache hit ratio. Of course, if you use their storage optimization system, it's 100%. And best of all, the best support, the nicest people in the world, 24-7, 365 days a year. They're always there when you need them. I can tell you as a Cashfly customer, 
We couldn't be happier. I know you will be, too. Find out more. Go to cashfly.com. You've heard me say it again and again. Uh, bandwidth for the Tech Guy, brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Thank you, Cashfly. Now, back to the podcast. This one, this song's kind of whiny. This I is am uh, Modest Mouse, isn't it? Is that who it is? Think to be. Oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, Leo Laporte, oh, Micah Sargent, <laughs> the singing tech guys. Boy, that would really... Oh, God. Which would be worse? The singing tech guys or the whistling tech guys? It depends on who you are. <laughs> I probably the singing. If tech it were guys James Corden, it'd be like, oh, cool, that's good. He can sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the singing tech guys. But would on the be other worse. hand, you wouldn't want Beyonce to fix your computer. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so it's know, okay that we, we can't each, each to his own. Yeah. Phil is on the line from Stevenson Ranch, California. Our next call. Hi, Phil. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. First time caller. It's so great yeah, to have know. you. We love our first-time callers. Well, I had a media center. It was a Mac Mini, and uh, I've got some Apple TV spread around the house, and the Mac Mini finally croaked. Oh, What software did it. you use on the Mac Mini to make it a media center? Did you have some special no. software? No. No. Just you just iTunes. use iTunes and let it run, and, and then the other machines that see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I, I have a Synology uh, ah. 419 Slim. Nice. I've got a backup of my media center on that Synology. The content, so I, yeah. So yeah. I would like my Apple TVs to see the Synology and act like a media center. I'll tell you my favorite way to do it. Synology does support... So Apple, it looks like Apple's not running a server when they're running iTunes, but they are. There is a there's an Apple Media server, so that's what iTunes is. Uh, so that's why it can serve. Obviously, uh, Plex isn't um, an Apple device, but they do support the file, the the Apple Media server system. But I would recommend a, a piece of software called Plex from Plex TV. Um, okay. And so it, it, Synology has it in their store. Uh, it's, uh, you can install it on your Synology with one click. And you will then point it at the folders where all your media lives. It does some very nice things. It gets album art. It will organize videos. Uh, it'll do some really nice things with it. And then, but you do, the dr only drawback is you do need on your other Apple devices to have the Plex app. Okay. But they have a Plex app for Apple TV, for Roku, for Fire TV, for iOS, for Android, for Chromecast, for PlayStation, for Xbox, for TVs from Samsung, LG, and Vizio. So you can pretty much put Plex everywhere. And that's actually nice because now you you don't even have to have a, a Mac or an Apple device to see your media. You could play it on your TV or your stereo or et cetera, et cetera. All right. Well, that sounds great. Um, yeah. So I, I just go into, like, uh, the Synology... Uh, the Marketplace. Download. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, the Package Manager. I can't remember if it's in the main Package Manager or uh, third parties, but if you just... Uh, you know what it is? It looks like it is part of the DSM packages. It's an add-on package. It's called the Plex Media Server. There, you can use it for free. It probably is worth buying a subscription for the additional features. They stream a lot of content. There's a lot of stuff you can do. In fact, you can even make uh -huh. Plex visible when you're not at home so that a lot of people who own Plex do this. Mm -hmm. they, 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 as they travel, they can watch their media or they share it with other Plex users. And then you can have kind of a group of people sharing media. All right. Do I need to take all the media out of the iTunes folder? And uh, you may have to. You may have to put in a special folder. Uh, I can't remember if you can just point the Plex server at it. I think you can. But you'll see. It'll be clear. Johnny Jet, Travel Guru, coming up. Out-of-home Plex is, is, is a, a, one of the paid services, 
but uh, in your home, you don't need to pay for it. I, I think it's worth it because they have a lot of other stuff, including yeah, streaming I'm content. Pretty, I'm pretty sure they have just Have you used Plex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't know you were Plex. Oh, I'm sorry. I would have shut up. No. I didn't know you were a Plex user. I know we both are. And I, I think that they will index your iTunes folder where it is, if I remember You could just correctly. say, this is where all the content is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that that's the case. As long as it's not Apple Music content, you know, that it's actual stuff that you own, then yeah, they can show Yeah, not copy protected yeah. or, you know. And remember, your streaming stuff that you, you know, cached doesn't count. But anything you yeah, bought, well, all of my uh, media, it's mostly uh, videos and uh, movies mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, I'm not concerned about the music so much because you know, I've got an Apple Plus subscription for that. Perfect. Just, uh, you know, I, I've got, uh, you know, probably, you know, uh, you know, maybe three or four terabytes of movies that I ripped from. Flex is Ray's. incredible for that. Because it will it will organize it. It'll say you know the date of the movie. I mean, it, has, it makes it look like it's the iTunes movie store. I mean, mm -hmm. it really does a nice job. Um, All right, you'll probably want to Google an article that says you know moving my iTunes media to Plex because you may have some renaming I've, to do or transcoding. I got one for you. Oh, good. Uh, TechGuyLabs.com, and it also I didn't realize this. You can integrate it with your photos library too. Oh yeah, so, so you can oh. have a slideshow. I mean, it's. Plex is very mature, very smart. Mm -hmm. It really works quite well. Yeah, I've got, you know, uh, tons and tons of photos that, you know, Perfect. I've got them in the cloud. I've got them on my Plex uh, or my Synology and all that because, you know, I, I'm just totally paranoid about having backups. And yeah, good. Like that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So. <laughs> there used to be, you know, more of these kinds of apps. Plex kind of won, basically. Uh, it's just so good. It was uh, it was based on the X Xbox. Um, what was it called? Xbox Media Server or something. It, it has an interesting history. And there was Myth TV. There were a whole bunch of these uh, originally, but Plex. Yeah, I remember Myth TV? Yeah, you remember Myth? Yeah, that was an uh, X. So it was XPMC, and then it got renamed to Cody. Uh, but it was written for the Mac originally, uh, so it's very Mac friendly. Um, so I think it's a good choice. I think it's a really good I choice. Yeah. I appreciate the help. You're very welcome. Enjoy. Let us know how it works. I will. Thanks Thank for calling. You. Bye. Yeah, perfect for uh, video, right? Mm-hmm. Plex is amazing. And I said, listen... It's time for Johnny Jet. Yeah. He's been everywhere. He's been in the mountain air and uh, everywhere in between. Johnny Jet, the traveling guru, is here with us today. Hello, Johnny Jet. Hello. How are you two doing? Uh, great. Doing great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a cool shirt. You know, I went through my closet. I was like, I don't think I've ever worn this one. Yeah, I like it. It's got it's a little tight on me, so I don't like to trees. wear it out in public. You look very manly. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I saw him in the news this week. Wait, he's Sylvester got, Stallone's in the news? Oh, he's got a I new movie. See that. Yeah. He's got a new movie. Yeah. Now he's getting divorced. That's what I saw. And got a new movie. He's. I choose to look at the bright side. You have to have side. both, yeah. Yeah. If he wants to do a new movie, yeah, he's yeah. got to have time for it. So sort of, yeah. Anyway, uh, tell us about travel. <laughs> hey, so th prices are starting to go down. Airports, I think today was, yesterday was 2.2 million. In 2019, it was 2.6. So we're still lagging, but it's because the airlines have cut back. They just don't have enough staff, pilots, gate agents, every kind of agent. Um, so we're still behind, but the planes are going to be full and but this is a good time to buy. Actually, I was looking at tickets to come back to go to Hawaii for over uh, New Year's. You can, after January 1st, uh, like maybe it's like the 5th or something, uh, 129 each way. And actually, I found a ticket to go to Hawaii right around that time for like 150 one way. So there's good prices. If you're, if you're thinking about flying you know, in the fall, in the spring, start booking or at least set a fare alert. So I sent a newsletter this week saying, set a fare alert because someone was like, is it too early to book? It might be too early to book. Just know what the price is for wherever you're going. If you know that price and if it drops below it, grab it. So that's why I tell people to set a, fare, a free fare alert. A bunch of companies do it. I'll, um, Google's one of them. Kayak, fare compare. I'll put the um, I'll put my post in the chat room. I'll tweet it out. I'll put it in my newsletter, and um, 
So that that's definitely the way to go if you're trying to save money on booking plane tickets. I subscribe to the Johnny Jet newsletter. I, find I that. have a daily travel tip yeah. and I have a weekly newsletter. So I just sent the daily travel tip today was about airport, you know, how to get through airport security um, quicker. And then tomorrow is my Sunday one. It's a main newsletter. So I'll have a roundup of all my tips from the week in case you don't want to get inundated with a daily travel tip. One of the things you said I thought was interesting. You said you have you should have your electronic devices fully charged before you go to through security. Why is yes. that? Why so, is that? Well, certain airports, especially in the UK. So let's say you do a long flight and you're connecting through the UK. The UK, when you go through security there, you got to take out everything. I'm talking, I take out all my electronics, all the cords. I even take out my lip balm because if they pu pull your bag over, you might have to wait 30 to 45 minutes just for them to check it. And we've had times where we almost missed our flight, but also because um, I don't know when they implemented this rule, but if they cannot power on your device, you cannot bring it through security. Oh, oh, because it could be a you know not a device; it could just be exactly. a shell around something sneaky. So, I, actually, I, I learned that this week from an influencer in um, the UK who posted it on Instagram or TikTok. So, I and I looked it up, and sure enough, there are the rules in the UK it's government. It's been years, but I have had them ask me to turn it on. But it's been a long time since they've done that. In the, in the UK US. or here, because because the US, they actually had, had a rule too. I sent the email to the TSA and it's just not clear if they still do, but they can. I think they like. reserve the right, you know. Exactly. But, um, yeah, because I, I always take my laptop out, my iPad out. I actually take all my electronics out because sometimes they say, oh, if it's smaller than a tablet, you don't have to take it out. But then they sometimes go, well, like once a camera lens bugged them. So really? take yeah. it all out. Listen, so I take, take it all it out. out now. Yeah, I take it Especially all out. Especially going through take it out. UK take airports. it all out. Yeah. But even here, you know, if you don't have TSA pre check, I take it out. But you know, I do have TSA pre. If you have lip while, balm, but... will they make you eat it? Just <laughs> <laughs> yes. So make sure you get the fruit flavor. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> the best um, travel tip. <laughs> no, but you'd be surprised at like just the little things in the UK. I'm talking like I had like a fingernail tip of a. Uh, like a liquid lip balm, and they're like, "Nope." And I was no, like, what? What? Because it wasn't in the original package. Because, because right? no, because it wasn't in a bag. You had to put it in a clear, oh, clear plastic bag. bag. As long as it's under what is it, three and a half ounces? Three is the, the but, three one but, one rule. But but um, I always thought three, it had three, to three be one. like in the original. It can't just be like a vial of liquid. Uh, it has to be in the original packaging, right? So they know what it is. Well, they still, still they'll still let me um, pass through, even though it was not yeah. in a clear plastic Probably bag. Probably it was, was also because you said I have a bomb. I have bomb here. Don't, don't, I yeah. have don't bomb ever, here. Don't ever do that. Don't do ever, that anywhere. Nope. You nope. will definitely go to jail. Really? What? Nobody said balm. B a l m. Oh. Lip balm. Yeah, I would even. <laughs> I think they still go to joke. jail. No, it was, you it don't was, joke. It's not. Don't joke. Don't joke. It's not a joke. Yeah. It's not funny. I'm a joker, but I, I when you go through airport security, you don't joke. Yeah, I would be <sighs> as quiet as possible. Yeah, and, and you know, talking about international airports, you know, from Brittany Griner, we learned. I mean, oh no, marijuana, no marijuana. Not just not, just not marijuana. If it's legal here, it doesn't mean it's legal That's right. there. That's right. You need to know the rules. I mean, there was once a. a a UK passenger passing through Dubai and he literally had a seed caught underneath his seat, yeah. uh, his shoe sole. And he got flagged and he went to jail for, I don't oh. know how long, a few years. Oh. A, a so, seed is in from some random plant or like no, a marijuana, marijuana, a marijuana, marijuana seed. Okay. There's no tolerance. And so, I mean, when you land in Singapore, they say, if you have any porn on your computer, it's, you know, you, you can go to jail for that. So you're like, what? I hope my friends didn't send me anything. And um, yeah, I mean, some of that stuff you're not really in control of. It could be in your. You email. can't even bring Tylenol to Japan. Whoa. So there's different and, and and some over counter of the medicines. So always make sure you know wow. what you're bringing. Wow. I need uh, to learn about Tylenol in Japan. I didn't know about that. Uh, and I. I mean, I've had. I, I keep Tylenol in my bag, and I've had it in my bag where I'm like, you know, luckily they didn't flag yeah. it. But you know, I always travel with Tylenol in case I get a fever. But I don't travel with a huge. Of, um, I, went, of them. I was um, many years ago. My book publisher had an event in the Bahamas, which is beautiful, and we flew in. And uh, they had the dogs, and they actually pulled one of the authors aside, strip search her. She, we, we all went on. She didn't show back up for hours because the dog smelled marijuana. 
Mm -hmm. She had none on her. But the theory was that the person who sat in the airplane seat before her had marijuana. It rubbed the smell rubbed off. The dog smelled it, and as a result, she was thoroughly wow. strip searched. Wow! 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 It was, wow! Uh, you know, really terrible. Now I don't know if that's still the case in the Bahamas. This was a long time ago, but yeah, it, it, it can be bad. It can be. Yeah, bad. If you're going to other countries where drugs are illegal, which most of them are, do not do drugs even a couple days before you're going. There was a story. What will they? Like, will they like test you? Ago. I have to I have to look up the story, but I remember it was again it was Dubai this one where yeah, just, someone very strict. someone fell sick. Yeah, he was sick strict. and they I think he had like a gallbladder problem, and he tested positive for marijuana. It makes you just want to stay home, doesn't yeah. it? No, you don't want to stay home. <laughs> Listen, I've been all around the world. I've been to you've been I've everywhere, never had any man. Problems. Knock on world. I haven't yeah. been everywhere, but I've been to a lot of places and I've never had any problems. And I just remember I used to be afraid to fly, afraid to leave the house, and afraid to leave the country. Yeah. And I once I left America and I was full of fear. I realized I actually felt safer outside of America. Yeah, isn't so that don't funny? I, I don't want people to like not travel internationally no, because no. I went to, to I travel. went to we, we visited Istanbul even after seeing Midnight Express. It was okay. It was okay. We didn't have to go to a Turkish prison. It was great. It was fun. Even you know, I think sometimes people are afraid of going to areas where politically it's maybe more repressive, like Turkey or Hungary or even Russia. And right. you're a guest there, and it's always at China. I've always had good experiences in those countries. I wouldn't be going to Russia right now. Maybe not Russia. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave out <laughs> Russia. But uh, I've always had great experiences uh, because you're you're a guest, and they and they don't want you to just don't you know just observe the local yeah, customs. And, and the people are amazing. Like you know, people are great everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are everywhere. Everywhere. It's Johnny good... Jet. Go to JohnnyJet.com. That's his website. His newsletter's there, free. You can also follow him on Instagram and Twitter. And every week, right here. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Love is temple. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. The blue moss. It's cheap. It's cheap. The, the Bosporus. Hagia Sophia. The Bosporus. You can you can go to Istanbul and be in Asia and Europe in yes, one I did, step. I did the ferry. Yeah. So no, that that you way. You the ferry. They, I don't we, think it's one step. You well, if ferry. you I mean, somewhere there's got to be a land border. No, I, no well, you have to yeah, take the ferry across the Bosporus. I think so. Yeah, because Asia is on one side and Europe's on the other side, so you can Correct. you can get two continents in in Correct. one. And Bodrum, I mean, Bodrum's just. I'm sure you've been to Bodrum, and it's an amazing place. I don't. What, what, was, you, what did you say? No, I've been to the top. Bodrum's a beach, beach city. Oh no, no, we were just in Istanbul. The beach proper. town. We never never left okay. town. Yeah. Okay, it's like it's like Sitges, it's Sitges for uh, for Barcelona. Which is a beautiful beach town uh, outside of Barcelona. My neighbor just got back from Turkey like a month ago, and she said she loved it. Although she did a hot air balloon oh. over over Cappadocia. Yeah, she went to Cappadocia. Cappadocia. Yeah. I didn't pronounce it. For, I anyway, don't know how you the basket hit the car bumper on the on takeoff, and the the light exploded, and it went into her leg, <sighs> and she was bleeding profusely. <laughs> Okay, that's and what they, we call still, a freak she's, accident. She still, she still went up. They, all, they, I mean, they all went up. They wrapped her leg. Yeah, and then she had to go to a hospital. Oh my word! I mean, wow. I like, what? She's eighty years old. Oh, she's like, I don't care. I'm going. Good for her. She's yeah, amazing. amazing. I love travel. Good because I'm hoping, you know, I'll be eighty in fifteen years. I'm hoping I can get some travel in before it's too late. Well. Yeah, I have to be back though on Saturday, so I can only go somewhere it takes two days <laughs> to visit. You really should well, just like take I don't know six months. Take off. a week off? No, like six Listen, months. Go do your travel. Well, you can do a lot in a few days. At some point, so I'm, I'm you know I always wanted to do a world cruise. Now I'm kind of backing off on that. Lisa says I can't be gone that long. Um, so I'm thinking we do like they have great voyages where it's like only it's a month or two. That would be you just string a few of those. Together over a few years, you get to see a lot of stuff. That way. I do miss home when I go away. I after, know after a certain. Period. I know. And now, usually Bert, I don't want to. Usually, I don't want to leave my house. And once I leave, I usually don't want to go home <laughs> until like a month. And later. now Burke is bringing us a puppy, right, Burke? Oh boy. Uh, so my kids have been asking for a puppy. Oh, and they're, don't get a puppy. You never. Like, you can't travel if you that's have. That's what a I'm dog. saying. It's like we yeah, travel too much. Take it from me, who has two dogs. It's very you never difficult go anywhere. To, so. No, so Burke, Burke, the new plan with Lisa is when the pup, when your parents bring the puppies up, Burke's getting one of them. What are they, Burke? They're like uh, 
They're very cute. They're so pretty. They just keep growing. Uh, when uh, they're in Texas, I know, but what they're not called Texas dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, she's going to bring the puppy over to see how the cats react. Okay, yeah. And uh, if the cats can handle it, then I have a feeling because she really wants a dog. Yeah, I know she's been saying. Will that they a be? Lot uh, will they be potty trained, Burke? <laughs> yeah, they breed that are, in these days. How about my kids? They're toy poodles. Your kids are not potty trained. No, no. I'm in no. fact, I remember when we we always said when they both are. kids are out of diapers, then we know <laughs> we're on our way. <laughs> That was a just, great day. We just potty kids. trained my th three year old. Oh, recently. yeah, that's that's a that's fun. So, you just put some newspaper on the ground, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had toilets all around the house. Oh God, I remember that. Yeah, for my boy. Yeah, for my. We girl. also said we're going to get new furniture as soon as the kids stop peeing on it, and then <laughs> now we say we're going to get new furniture as soon as the cats stop clawing it. So we're going to get a puppy, so it's over. Yeah, forget it. Restart. I'll have to get all new shoes. Thank you, Johnny. Have a great week. Have a good you one. as well. Take care. Too, see ya. Oh, too soon. Too soon? Too, yeah, I was doing a gesture to go with the lyric, but the yeah. lyric doesn't this come is, in yet. Yeah. So, okay. So, if you want to do this show, I got to warn you. You got to practice talking up to the, the vocals. It's very important DJ technology. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Tech. DJ Tech. 8888-ASK-LEO. The phone number. Leo and Micah here taking your calls. Megan's on the line from San Diego. More San Diego. I love it. Hi, Megan. Hi, Leo. Thank you so much for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Um, I have a question regarding Apple and iTunes. That's for this guy right here. All right. Micah's our Apple expert. Go ahead. Uh, I've just come across a situation where I can no longer purchase songs from iTunes. Okay. Tell Your us credit's more. no good here, young lady. <laughs> I know. It's like, no, I, oh my gosh, I updated my Apple ID. I don't have Apple Music. I just have you know, iTunes uh -huh. <laughs> because I, I'm running a Windows 7 on my computer and I just all of a sudden it just asks me for additional verification and it says click billing info uh -huh. nothing happens the song won't download um, I talked to Apple support back and forth they keep calling me back all day you know well at least they're at least there's some yeah, they're they human they really have to good you. customer support yeah. uh -huh. even if they don't they'll fix keep it coming back but they don't have a solution and so then they're sending codes text codes to my phone i'll type in the code and all of a sudden the song will start to download and i get so happy and then that verification required comes up again i hit billing oh, info so and frustrating. nothing happens hmm, okay so frustrating so this sounds like I, i've had this some a similar thing happen to me in the past okay. and uh when it happened i was trying to buy an app and i had a credit card in my account that had expired and i didn't know it and it caused uh, an error at that time and then because of the way the whole system worked, it kept just kind of re-looping over Even and though over you gave again. it new Even, info? Well, once I went in, because I didn't realize that that's what it was. I didn't realize that it was because the card had expired. <clears throat> so what I had to do was go to my iCloud account online, which you can do by opening any browser, and you can go to appleid.apple.com. That's what I did, yes. And my and my my credit card had not been expired or anything, you know, because they verified that through, through you know, talking to them. They said, well, put in a different credit card. Mm -hmm. And we did that same thing. And they, and they went onto my computer, and they, they don't understand this little gray box with additional verification. And so then they texted me codes, and the songs are downloading. So it wasn't the credit card. I went to the Apple ID. Um, How did I, Apple leave it after yeah, all of this? Um, so, Apple left it with, I need to talk to uh, my um, the people who run my security on my computer. Does somebody run Ooh, the security yeah, on your computer? No, I told them not to. They said, oh, open your computer in safe mode. We're going to go there. I said, you know what? I'd rather talk to my internet <laughs> security provider. Okay, so uh, tell, me, tell me about this. Mm -hmm. who, who you tell me about your security? How do you have an internet security provider? Did you, may I tell you who it is? Yes, I have AVG. Okay, take and that right off right now, immediately. <laughs> okay. Take that right off. You okay. do not need any security on a Macintosh. Is it a Mac? It's not a Macintosh. I'm running. Oh, you're running Windows. Dell. Okay. Okay. XPS. 
you know. It's, yeah, so and, I'm not a fan of uh, uh, security software of any kind because right. of things like this. However, I understand why people who use Windows want to run it. You're yeah. you're kind of in a minefield. Uh, yes. The good news is, what version of Windows? Windows 10, Windows 11? Windows 7. Whoa! There's your Ooh. problem right there! I, I'm old school. Oh. I'm, I'm old school. I mean, I've got... You know, I don't run Apple anything. All I've got is a Nano and you a You say you're old school. What shuffle. that means is you're using an unsafe operating system. Yeah, Windows 7 is never going to be okay. Windows 7? Because I, I, I was always very happy with Windows 7. I know, but Microsoft no longer supports it. Oh, I know. That's why AVG is supporting it for me. No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> no, they're not. Okay. So you need to go to Windows 10. I'm sorry. Windows 10. Oh, I was afraid of that because I didn't want to, like the last caller, I didn't want to keep getting those. I'll do the settings. So, those. You're, you're running a 15-year-old operating system, and yeah. it no longer is supported. My guess is the certificates mm -hmm. that are required by Apple are not there. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now I understand the problem. Of course, Apple can't help you with Windows because they don't know what's going on. They no. In no fact, idea. and I, I talked to someone who said, oh, well, we don't even have a good relationship with Windows 10. <laughs> he was honest. He was very, very cool. Yeah, I don't like using <laughs> iTunes on uh, on Windows at all. Uh, okay. Apple Apple is not incented to make that a working, a good situation, and, right? And I, I, I heard about, you said like Music Monkey. I, I looked at that episode and I thought I was going to change my iTunes. But the problem is... A lot of, I, I rather buy the CD personally, but sometimes now you go to buy a song and it's only available through digital download. Yeah, nobody's... And, th and, this, I'm, and this I is, hate that. I hate, like, you know what is even worse? Actual, Pretty soon you're not even going to be able to buy the song. You're going to have to rent it. That's what, rent it? Yeah, that's basically oh. what streaming music is. As long as you keep paying your monthly fee, you got access to mm -hmm. all the music. Is, is there any way that I can purchase music... And I don't have Spotify. I'm not even sure if I can do it with yeah, yeah. Windows you, 7. So you can still buy digital music from other vendors. Okay. I think the problem is that it's a very old version of iTunes. They don't have an up-to-date version of iTunes for Windows 7. And okay. it's not. it does not have the certificates that modern iTunes needs. I don't know why Apple didn't tell you that. They, they didn't. They didn't. Yeah, so they should have you, yeah, they should have told you. Both of you. I'm yeah. so happy. So that's the problem. No. Now, if you don't want to go to Windows 10, there's mm -hmm. certainly other places you can shop for music where you can basically, in a, the equivalent of buying the CD, except it's digital. So right. there's com there's websites like iTrax, I-T-R-A-X dot com. Oh, are they out of business? No, they're not. They're still there. These are high-definition albums. Um, iTrax. iTrax. Okay. But there's lots of places. Amazon, Amazon still sells yeah. digital music. Okay. And almost any... Uh, yeah, I can't guarantee you everything that you could buy mm -hmm. uh, on iTunes will be there. But almost uh, certainly on, yeah. on Amazon it will be. It will be. And then um, yeah. what kind of library do I need to store them in? Okay, I won't be able to use iTunes, obviously. You can so, use iTunes to play it once you've bought it. So it, I can move it. You know, Absolutely. Buy it on on iTrax and Just then import it from I, in iTunes. Yeah, yeah, there'll be that file import option that you can use. And you just say, hey, this is where this music is stored. It'll import it in and you will be able to play it back because it's not trying to download from the iTunes library. There's AIX oh. records. I'm actually, I'm giving you a list of... Uh, Super high quality music. If you just want regular CD quality music, Amazon's probably the best place to go. Oh, that's that's yeah. that's that's fantastic. And then once you, you once you buy it, you'll download the album, okay, and, and then just import it into iTunes. You won't have any of this problem. So I won't have a certificate. Problem no, no, it's just it for some, library. Yeah, it's for the secure transaction. But okay. I gotta warn you, this is going to become more and more of a problem because yes. Windows, you know, you can't, you you won't be able to get a, a modern browser. And at some point, Amazon's going to say, "Well, I'm sorry, but you can't uh, go to our site in this browser." Yeah, slowly but surely, all of the apps that you use will start to uh, fit, fiddle out. They'll start to not be able to work. And AVG does not protect you mm -hmm. against. Uh, exploits that mm -hmm. are not being patched. So, okay. for instance, there are a number of just recently patched Windows exploits that means you can go to a w malicious website and it'll it'll take over your computer and AVG won't even know it happened. Oh yeah, I don't I don't even search the internet really except for the iTunes part on on the okay. computer. Okay. So you if you're just music. using as a music computer to search. You know what I would suggest? Make the you can continue to just take this computer offline. Okay. 
Okay. M make it your music player computer. Okay. Buy the f songs somewhere else or only buy songs on that computer. That will simplify it. That's what and I've don't been doing. do I've anything been else. Then it's fine. Then it's safe. Yeah. Take AVG off. You don't need that. That's not the problem. Okay. It's no. not going to protect you. But if you only go to Amazon and you only buy music there, and at some point when Amazon says you can't do that even, buy it on a different computer, put it on a thumb drive, copy it over to this computer. It's completely mm -hmm. safe to continue using this computer as long as it's not online. It's the online part that's dangerous. So if I can buy the music and then the iTunes library itself, I can just move it in. And I don't have to worry about... I need this certificate. Exactly. Exactly. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. More calls right after this. Yeah. It Windows. You can. You know. You can use anything obsolete as long as it continues to work for you, and you don't yeah. go online. There's no security problem. The security well, I, problem entirely yeah. comes from going online. Yes. Well, I thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad you you called and. I'm sorry that uh, that Apple didn't really understand this. No, I didn't, and I really certificates issues. I totally didn't think of it, but I'm yes, I get, I'm running Windows Seven, so I'm not the biggest. Yeah. Once you said that, I understand. Person. So what is what's going on? What browser do you use? Um, well, I well I only browse on my Chromebook. Good, good, and then good, I go, good. I go to my big Dell computer if I find a song I like, and I try to buy it through iTunes. So it is like a big. Kind of, it's a jukebox. You know, That's a jukebox. That's it fine. Is a big jukebox. Yeah. Every so buy music cool. if you really want to be safe. Buy it on the Chromebook. Put it on a thumb drive or download yeah. it to a thumb drive. Put it on your uh, your Windows computer and just disconnect the internet. And I, I think will. then it's a perfect usage for that computer. Yeah, that's great. Right? It's awesome that you found a way to use one of these old uh, machines. Yeah. Oh, I, I have. Well, my dad was a computer engineer. I miss him so much. But Leo, oh. thank you for being there. Because well, I'm glad I could. Of yours oh. and, um, <laughs> what was his name? My, his name was John. Oh, I bet you miss him. Yeah, he he was, um, yeah, it reminds me of you so much. And oh. that's why it's really cool to be able to talk to you and my son. I wish I could have met him. Oh. He, he loved you. He totally loved you. Oh. Every weekend it was... He you know. made you listen, huh? I'm sorry, <laughs> Megan. I'm so sorry. I loved it, too. I was like, you know, totally daddy's girl, you know, kind oh, of. And I wanted so to sweet. learn everything that he learned, you know. Oh, I'm too. so, so, I'm so glad I that. Old systems. I, I try to keep all of his systems going. And, oh. and um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what, Megan? You're so sweet. And if I were your dad, I'm sure he's looking down. He's he's very happy. Very he's very happy. Aww. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, keep that going. Just disconnect it from the internet. Use your mm -hmm. Chromebook. You're so smart to do that. That's your secure mm -hmm. stuff. That's always going to yeah. be safe. Yeah. And then uh, you can you can use iTunes. It's fine if you like iTunes. Just import those songs, and they'll play in the library. It's it, what it probably is is that iTunes is using an old technology called TLS mm -hmm. 1.2 mm -hmm. and they no longer support it at Apple and nobody supports it. Uh, it's been deprecated yeah. so because it's not secu not as secure as the modern ones. Wow. And this is a this was kind of an a, a ongoing tsunami that has finally come to a head I think and uh, you're seeing this more and more now. Exactly because we can't even find decent you know ways to pl have mini players or digital players anymore and I don't want to walk around with a disc man. <laughs> I, have, I have like an old Nano and a, and a I mini shuffle, but I can't even get those to. I, what's on them is on them right now. That's it, you know. But I can't even find a digital music player that's decent. So, what do you? So you want something that's as small as a nano, kind of? Well, well no, I, yeah, nano size. But I don't want. I don't want everything on my phone. You know, I don't want. So SanDisk still makes little music players. I saw that, but I was trying to order one through Radio Shack. That was my favorite place. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> they're, as, they're as gone as that Windows 7 install. I dream about working at Radio Shack. My dad and I wanted to open a franchise. Oh, my oh. gosh. So, but they don't make like, the, the, the sand disc. Um, Amazon sells it. Thank Amazon you. sells it, yeah. Amazon sells yeah, it. Yeah, it's the it's like called the San like the best option for me. Yeah, and do that on your Chromebook. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they they actually have a lot of good MP3 music players. They're small, they're cheap, mm -hmm. um, and you plug in headphones. And you know, they, the one to get is the Clip, just like the Nano. It's basically nice. their copy of the Nano. With a clip, that's cool. Yep. 
Okay, because I just don't want to, you understand, I don't want everything to be controlled by my phone. No, I understand that. Because mm -hmm. it seems like the guy who puts the, the, the chip in his hand, they open his door and open what, you know, I don't want all that. I like things to be separate, you know, kind yeah. of autonomous. Yeah. You know, because it seems easier to manage. <laughs> yeah. Even though there's more devices. When but. we were on the cruise to Alaska, uh, the nerds with me were so excited because there was a radio shack <gasps> and and they all went there and they all bought stuff and i guess there's still a few radio shacks left i don't think there's any radio shacks in the southern california though <laughs> oh my goodness there's so many stores that i miss the radio shacks i know them. i know I, I love them they were really good service and you know like put they'll put the batteries they used to put the batteries yeah the battery in, club in for i you. asked them i said did you uh, did you say you remember the battery club did they ask for your phone number <laughs> well, no, you, you gotta get your <laughs> <laughs> number, but, you know that's that was that was the go-to place for Isn't you know funny? for so long. Isn't that funny? And then I missed Tower Records because it was so easy. Tower to Records, you bought, yeah. You buy, you bought a bought record, music. You bought a record. Oh, cool. Megan, you're an old soul. You're like Micah. Definitely. You're an old soul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my goodness. Well, you. Well, I, I'm not kidding. This has been what a joy. Oh, <laughs> Megan, thank you so much. Like this, and oh. um, and now my dad's looking down. He's so happy. Oh, John, we love you. you. Your daughter's. Great. Well done. Well done. Well, you're wonderful. Aww. And I just thank you again for all of your help. Sure, and uh, sure. and uh, stay well and healthy and keep on rocking the free world. You're my superhero. <laughs> Leo Michael. I love Neil Young, too. Good. All right. Good. We got we got a connection there. <laughs> thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Um, Take okay. care. You, too. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yep, the tower on sunset. I feel like I need to get one of these Sandisk clips just because it's it's just so a, cute. Yeah, it's so cute. I think it's I have one somewhere. Good little idea. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's an MP3 player. It's not going to sound like uh, oh, it's your not stereo. Neil Young's. Uh, what <laughs> it's is not it? the Pono? I have the a Pono back here for you. Pono player. Signed by Neil. Where's my Pono? Oh, here it is. Well, you're going to inherit all this too. Oh Lord. <laughs> You've got to take your... You need to do your world trip. Even if you have to do it alone, you need to do your world trip. <laughs> it's signed by Neil. That's really cool. Look on the Did back. You, oh, good. It's... I was yeah, going to say... it's not that kind you, of signature. It's, okay, good. Uh, yeah, I got the... That was the original Kickstarter. How much... Does it have music on it right now? Probably. We should charge it up and see. Yeah, we should. USB micro, and does it have an SD... Yep, yeah, SD card slot, micro SD. Here, I'll, I'll give you... Let's, let's give it... Like, get a cable... I have so much old crap. I don't know, you know, what are we going to do? Oh, it even has out. Oh, yeah. Is there, what, is there a DAC in this? Yeah, there's a very oh. good DAC and a very good amp. That's what That's made it neat. special. Was the, um, what's the, what the hell is this plugged into? <laughs> it goes back into the back of the drawer. John's looking at me. Whoa, don't do that, Leo. He's going to go into the <laughs> desk next. I think that's just gives power. I don't think it goes to your computer. No. Well, here, I'll plug oh, yeah, it into this. Let's we'll see if it gives power, even. Well, that's the whole point of it being there. Is, is it still plugged in? Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's a whole... Charging. Whole charging thing. the Pono player. Pono charging. Pono so, charging. I found a very interesting line in um, Singularity Trap. Yeah. That you can read out of context. I'm reading it right now. They just discovered something. I know what it is, too. Oh. And since the human brain is a dog's breakfast of emergent properties, it's slow going. I love, <laughs> I love dog's, dog's breakfast. breakfast. You've never heard that before? No. Oh, it's a Britishism. A dog. It's just a mess. <laughs> it's a dog's breakfast. Dog. What is, by the way, what is this? A dog's breakfast. Looks like a keycap. It says BGR... Boy Genius Report. Boy Genius Report yeah. key. Yeah. Anyway, so the Pono, I wonder if this will turn on. I don't see there's it's the Neil Young limited edition, 251 of 500. Pono Playa. It probably has rock, rock, rocking in the free world on it. <sighs> Is this the burger button? <laughs> the burger button. I could use a burger right now. I am the burger meister. I am the burger button. Press me and have a burger pop out. I do. Was it just know. sitting on your desk? 
Or yeah. did you find it in a drawer? It was sitting right here. Oh, it I fell off of something, this. something. I don't know what. It's blocking something. This is the strangest beast. Hello and... Oh, am I muted? No, I'm not. Welcome back to the Tech Guy Radio Show. With <laughs> you're, your trying out, you're trying out to start different opens too, huh? I am. Yeah. Leo Laporte okay. and Micah Sargent. Let's get ready guys. to geek out. Number? Oh, yeah. Don't say that. Oh, yeah. He owns it. <laughs> Never mind. Hi. <laughs> Hi. That's Micah. Oh, that's uh, Leo. And uh, we're your tech guys. Yeah, we answer your tech questions, see? <laughs> 8888 ask Leo and Micah is the phone number, 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. If you're outside those areas, you can still call us, but you'll have to finagle it. Use Skype out and call that number. It should be still free because it's a toll free number. 8888-ASK-LEO. Micah has been very good about putting stuff we talk about uh, in the show notes. Those are at techguylabs.com. That's the website, techguylabs.com. This is uh, episode 1921. Once you get there, you'll see a, a few things. Links uh, to the you know websites and things, articles we've mentioned. Eventually, there'll be a transcript of the show up there with time codes. There'll also be audio and video from the show up there, so you can jump to that part of the show and you know search for it and then jump to it. Uh, all up there for free. No sign up. TechGuyLabs.com. I think the next call is Tom in Carson City, Cal uh, Nevada. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Um, I have a problem with Mozilla's uh, Firefox. Me too. Version, oh, go ahead. <laughs> version 104 broke the picture-in-picture. Picture. What? Down, down in YouTube? Down timer to blanking, to blanking the screen. So the PIP in YouTube specifically or all picture-in-picture? For video. I'll picture in picture when you run it on the browser. Huh. Let me just see which version I have running. Because uh, I use Firefox. This is my uh, browser of choice. Yeah. It has lots of good blockers. It's a nice nice piece of software, I think. Um, I am running 104. That's the one you're running. That's the current version, huh? Right. Any uh, Micah has been uh, googling. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking. I don't, don't see anything. Don't see huh? any complaints. So what happens? You're in a video. Uh, you push the button that makes it PIP, that little weird square with the arrow or whatever, and uh, it goes down. It shrinks down, or no, nothing happens. It goes to full screen, and okay. 180 seconds later, it blanks out, and leaving you just listening to soundtrack. Exactly 180 seconds later. Yeah. You timed it. Reliably. Reliably. Wow. At the three-minute mark, it goes, yeah, you're done. Yeah. That's weird. I don't have three minutes to do this, but I'm going to... I'm, <laughs> I'm going uh, to... So, so you didn't pop out the video. You didn't do the the thing with the arrow. You did the full screen. Oh. Uh, because full screen is not the same as picture in picture. Picture in picture is small screen. Little screen while you're looking at other but, stuff. But but it can be full size screen because you can resize it to that. Oh, I guess you're right. So you're doing, okay. So yeah, I'm just trying to recreate your uh, your situation here. So you're doing, you you got a picture in picture, and then you decide to expand it. Oh no, that that takes it out of picture in picture. So I'm putting in picture in picture again, and then you stretch it to full screen. Why do you do that? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I mean, why not just go full screen? Well, when I'm watching um, Turner Classic Movies, yeah, I don't like all the other stuff that comes up across the bottom of the screen all the time. Got it. Well, this one needs a re reliably a clear screen. Okay. So I've got picture in picture, uh, and then I'm going to zoom it uh, to a larger thing without a lot of junk on the bottom. Do you, do you hide Firefox? Do you hide it so you can just have the desktop in the picture, or do you not do that? No, it just it just lays over top of Firefox. Right. It's over on top of everything. Uh, so you're manually stretching it open. Yeah, I have it go to, to full screen. In, oh, 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 oh. Chat room might have it. Clever chat room. Good. Because you said exactly at three minutes. They're wondering maybe your screensaver's kicking in. Oh. Oh, well, oh, 
You know, that's because that's that's on a timer, right? Yes, and if you don't do full screen, then the computer doesn't know that you're playing a video, it goes. and so it thinks you're just going to sleep. Versus, if you go into actual full screen, any application is going to tell the computer, "Hey, I'm watching a video full screen." I'm watching here. Yeah. Oh, I bet you that's what that's it is. So similar. you have a couple of choices. You could disable the screensaver, but you could also set up a hot corner, a place where you move the mouse to disable the screensaver, uh, and that way it won't kick in, even if you're not active. Oh. I think I think that's a clever solution, thanks to Bill in Michigan and our IRC who suggested that. You could also get a mouse jiggler. Remember, remember <laughs> the Dick Bartolo? The, the mouse jiggler will uh, keep keep your machine from sleeping. It is odd that it's only started as of uh, Firefox 104, so there could be a bug in it that's preventing Firefox from saying, hey, I'm playing a video, yeah. telling the computer, hey, because yeah, it worked a video. before, didn't it? Yeah. I'm working here. I'm watching. All right. Well, give that a shot anyway. Take a look at that and see if that's it. And if it's not, I don't know. Why do you use why do you use Firefox out of curiosity, uh, Tom? What what is it about Firefox you like instead of say uh, Chrome or Edge or Internet Explorer? It doesn't give you ten, it doesn't give you ten thousand advertisements. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I love it. Uh, do you run a uh, ad blocker in addition to Firefox or just use its own blocking? No. It's enough. It's yeah. 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 Uh, I agree. I'm, and it's it to me it feels fast. I'll tell you the other reason I like Firefox. Um, Chrome is eating the world, right? Mm -hmm. Every browser, there are really only two browsers now left in the world. There's Chrome and everything from Internet, uh, from Edge, Microsoft's browser, uh, to Vivaldi, to everybody's using Chrome. Uh, or, or Brave is another one. Or if you're on Apple, you're going to be using WebKit, which is Apple's Safari engine. But I want to make sure there's competition out there. I want to make sure there's a third. And Mozilla is open source. Uh, I want to support them. So I really, I, I use Mozilla as much a, as a political statement, Firefox as a political statement as a, as a browser. And it happens to be a very good browser. I do run an ad blocker uh, with it. Uh, uBlock Origin is my ad blocker of choice. It also blocks, uh, I run it in strict mode. If you go in the settings, you'll see you can turn on strict mode. Uh, which breaks some sites. That might be another thing to check to try stepping the privacy protections down if you have it in strict mode. But uh, I like that because it, it turns off all trackers, cookies, tracking content, crypto miners, fingerprinters, all of that stuff is blocked. And even uh, has a sandbox's Facebook like buttons and things like that. So you're not sending a signal back to Facebook that you're, uh, you're there. You know, you're on that website. And I don't I don't have a Facebook account, but even if you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook kind of tracks you through those thumbs up buttons all over the internet. So that's what I like Firefox. What do you use, Micah? I'm mostly a Safari guy. Just you're because you're a Mac. It works across all my devices. Yeah. Uh, with Firefox as my backup browser for when I need to especially for Google Meet and all that kind of Safari stuff. Safari has many of the same blocking capabilities. My problem with it is it's Apple only. Yep. And uh, it's great if you only use Apple devices, the bookmarks sync, everything syncs, it works fine, it's a very fast, it sips on batteries, so it's great for laptops. But because I also use Windows, Linux, other machines, I use Firefox because it does sync across the all syncing. of those. Yeah. If I have to bounce between devices as well, I will yeah. use Firefox because yeah. of how well it syncs. Uh, another thought from Burke, uh, he says, if your bat, the three minutes is the clue, right? Yep. That happens precisely at 180 seconds. If you've got, uh, if you're on battery power, it could be your power, your battery savings, power savings could be doing that. So you might check those power saving settings. But again, and this is what we're always looking for when we, we take your calls. We're always looking for that little clue. And we said, it happens at 180 seconds. Yeah, good for you for measuring that. That's, thinking to measure yeah, that. that's, that is a sign of something. Something's happening Something's every three minutes. Something's talking to us there. Something's talking to us. We just got to pull on that. Stop talking. <laughs> I'm working. I'm watching here. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, that's the phone number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. Uh, when we come back, I will talk a little bit about LastPass. If you use it as your password manager, uh, you might be interested to know there was a breach, but you'll also be relieved to know it doesn't seem to affect your security. We'll talk a little more about that when we come back. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. Note the time. Check Event Viewer. That's good too, Rintaro. That's a good... Good, always a good idea. 
Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, 8888-ASK-LEO. Tom's on the line from Carson City. Oops. Yeah, we've done Tom. He's gone. We did Tom. We got Now we got Matt in Simi Valley. Sorry about that. Hi, Matt. Hey, uh, I got a quick question. Um, I'm trying to get a doorbell, but I don't want to have monthly subscriptions. So I've been I looking don't at, like, blame the, you. Yeah. The G4 Unify, but I don't know what else to buy with it to make it work. Oh, you need a lot with that. <laughs> so G, the G4 Unify, which is a great video doorbell, is part of a home security system created by Ubiquity. So they are going to expect you to have a Ubiquity router. They're going to expect you to have something called PoE, Power Over Ethernet. So that means you're going to have to get a, a PoE device on the other end. That's what powers the doorbell. Um, it's a little complicated. It's a little complicated. I, I use Ubiquity at home. I love Ubiquity. I don't have any hesitation recommending it. But uh, you're going to now need to have a new router in your life. Is there any other options that you recommend that don't require a monthly subscription that can have local storage that I can access? Uh, I'm West Coast and East Coast. Are you, are you an Apple user or are you an Android user? Android. Okay. Um, and Apple. I have an iPad and... Uh, that would work. Okay, so yeah, there are two options that you could use. There's a, a device from Logitech called the Circle View Doorbell, and there is a device from NetAtmo that is uh, just called the Smart Video Doorbell. Each of these works with Apple's uh, HomeKit Secure Video. And so this type of, of storage system, it's local, um, so it would work with your iPad in this case, and it doesn't require a monthly subscription in order to use it. So even though Logitech and NetAtmo probably both offer a subscription service, you don't actually need those services in order to use this camera. Apple does a very uh, has a very clear rules on these devices being able to be used without needing to even download the third-party app. Uh, so this would let all of that kind of happen locally on your network, and you wouldn't have to worry about that uh, external storage. The only thing that you need to be aware of is that it's not going to keep that video forever and ever and ever. It sort of has a pocket that it keeps that uh, will continually get updated. So if you're wanting full and complete control and regular sort of backups, then yeah, that ubiquity option there's, is. There's one other go. product uh, that doesn't require HomeKit that I it comes from a company I like called Eufy. E U F Y. Oh, yeah. That that's their division of Anchor, which makes some great stuff. Eufy has a video doorbell that doesn't have a subscription because it, you get a base station. And the base station has 16 gigabytes on it of local storage. So that's what it's connected to. Um, it doesn't continuously stream, um, but it will record when there's motion. You know, you see something there, somebody rings, obviously somebody rings the doorbell. And they say, you know, you can do... Uh, 90 days of recordings if you do 25 recordings a day, each lasting 15 seconds. I would certainly check out the specs of, of either of these, but the Eufy does not require, and I like Eufy. I That's think they're a why. good company. Th these are new. I didn't know it's that a base was station. doing doorbells. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's getting into this business. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know if any of these are uh, remote accessible? Are they all remote accessible? Because it's for a house that I have on the East Coast and I'm ah. on the West Coast. Um, Eufy is definitely remote accessible. Logitech okay. um, would probably, I, I would hesitate with the other two because they're probably going to require you using the app. But um, from what I'm seeing here with the Eufy, yeah, it is remote accessible. As long as you've got that uh, that the bridge. base station. Yeah, the base yeah. station. Thank you. So the, that's then, the reason you pay a subscription for the rest of these is they yeah. put it on their servers and you're paying, you know, I have a uh, hello doorbell from Google's uh, Nest division. Uh, I've used the Ring doorbell. In both cases, you can use the Ring doorbell without a subscription, but you won't have access to any recordings because that's what you're paying for. One other question is if I decide to throw the towel and just pay for the subscription, which one would you recommend? I like the Hello from uh, Google very, very much. And they have a fairly, okay. if you do other Nest cameras, um, they have a one-size-fits-all one subscription that's not too expensive. And, you, you know, I have multiple cameras both here in the studio and at home. Um, I have a doorbell. So there's a lot of stuff going on. It also, I mean, both Google and Amazon's Ring, yeah, you know, there's this issue of they hand over or might hand over videos to uh, law enforcement if they're, you know, properly, if, they, if you ask them pretty please. 
Um, they uh, there may be some privacy issues with the Google Hello because it does do face recognition. Uh, I like that because uh, it ties into my Google Nest Home Hub, the screen, the Google Assistant screen, and it'll actually say, you know, Joe's at the door, and it'll show me a picture. Uh, it'll say, hey, there's a package been left at the door, and I can see the package. So there's some advantages to that. So you're using it for home security when you're not in that house. Is that it? Right, yeah. I just want to be able to occasionally see if the uh, yard guy came by and did yeah. the mowing. I think this Eufy is probably a really, really good choice. There's some really nice features. It has two cameras. One of the problems with a lot of these doorbells is they have this super wide view, uh, and it's kind of fisheye. This has a package camera as well as that big wide view. I don't know if you care about that. Um, and it will alert you. And, yeah, you can do it over the Internet. So I, I guess that's probably everything you'd want. It looks pretty good. I haven't I, I haven't tried it. I've tried the Ring say, and the Hello. This is looking pretty good. This might yeah. be the, the one that I go with. It's we, should, also got, we should get it and, and review it is what we should do. So if you want to get this, let me know. It's got radar motion detection in it, which yeah, is nice. So that which it can is cool. cut back on the amount of times it bothers you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Delivery guard, get notified. You're not going to get any packages when you're not home, I presume. You just want to know what the gardener, gardener's up to. Repurposed old cell phones. So oh, that's interesting. They would, o they would overheat and then shut down. That's right. Uh -huh. And then I couldn't restart that's right. the app when I was away. Yeah, that's right. Um, 2.4 gigahertz is one limitation. It doesn't do 5 gigahertz. So it will connect to your, your Wi-Fi uh, router. You don't have to hardwire it to the base. I think it's a. I think it's. A, looks like a pretty good. I love it that you don't have to have a subscription. And that's um, the Ufi one. Ufi. Yeah, we'll include a link in the show notes at techguylabs.com, along with links to the other offerings, including the one that Leo mentioned. That's now called the Nest doorbell, no longer called the Hello. Oh, they don't. Doorbell. They don't. They call it Hello anymore. I thought they stopped calling it Nest. Okay, now it's. I'm very confused. It is very confusing. <laughs> Wise uh, W Y Z E also makes doorbells. They make a lot of cameras that usually. Record locally. I don't know if their doorbell records locally. I just hesitate to rec recommend anything from... They had uh, a security problem, which they kept quiet for a while. But, I, you know, I think they've been chastened. <laughs> uh, that would be another one to look at as the Wise uh, Video Doorbell. I don't know if you need a subscription for that. It's an optional. Let's put it that way. It's an optional subscription. Thank you very much hey, for the information. Hey, our pleasure. Thanks for calling. That's what we're here for. If nobody calls, we've got nothing to do. <laughs> 8888 Ask. Leo, we'll put links to all this stuff at the website, as I mentioned, uh, Tech Guy Labs, as Micah mentioned, techguylabs.com. This is episode 1921. When you go to techguylabs.com, you're actually, we shut down the old site. You're now going to our twit.tv podcast site. You'll see it automatically redirects to twit.tv. Uh, and while you're there, look around, because we have other shows. We have Micah's show, which is all for, for people who love iOS, iOS Today. He does that with the wonderful Rosemary Orchard. Mm -hmm. we, uh, you also do Tech News Weekly, a weekly news show. We have a news roundtable this week in tech. Mac Break Weekly, Windows Weekly. We have a lot of podcasts for you. All of that uh, at techguylabs.com. Leo and Micah, we're going to take a break. Come back with more calls in just a bit. Unlimited video length storage and advanced AI detection with subscription. Yeah, I'm sure that they, they, they've they moved kind of to that subscription model. Yep. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Unforch. Oh, I'm saying the same thing as the Cop King. <laughs> Unfortunately, Everything. everything's going subscription. <laughs> yeah, apps and... Apps too, like every. I didn't mention this week in Google. I didn't mention security now, nor did I mention this week in space. Spank me. Nor did I mention hands on Macintosh or hands on Windows. Hands on Windows. The Untitled Linux Show and the Giz Fizz. Nor did I mention any of that. Pono, powered by. Yeah. Powered by Neil himself. Neil, powered by the young. Hello. Hello, Pono. A Y R E is how that. Yeah. Hello, Puno. Well, you have good eyes, youthful eyes. <laughs> Here we go. It's putting up. Here we go. It's putting up. Ha ha. Ha ha. Is it Android? Uh, no. It's got its own oh, oh scanning music library. Operating oh, system. Oh, it's got its own operating system. Actually, it might be Android. Actually, I think it might be. You're right. Look at this. Nothing. Can't be right. 
Surely there's some music. No sort. No songs. No playlists. Nothing. Oh. Did I take the... Uh, I might have taken the thing out. Yeah, there's no... Oh, that's why. I, t I took the... I took the S micro SD card out. My music. So there's nothing on it. Would you like to borrow it? I would like to borrow it. I'd, well, uh, there you go. You'll want more Pono Player Info. And, firmware. Uh, high quality. I'd love to listen to it. No, that. it's the Ivanhoe DE, DBA Pono Music, 2014 to 2015, firmware 106. Oh, I, I wonder, wonder if, if it's got updates. Update. <laughs> Ooh, how exciting. <laughs> I know, right? Apache I like License. Wow, so I don't think it is... Um, yeah, that doesn't sound like it. I don't think it is... Uh, uh, I think it's its own open source thing. Huh. Anyway, here you go, laddie. Here's the porno player for you. Thanks, I'll put, put some, some music, music on, on that. that. Yeah. Oh, there Who is knows? one song, Heart of Gold from Neil Young. It comes with, uh, yeah, Neil Young. Wait a minute. <laughs> Revealer. It, I think the whole album's on there. Oh, is that an album? I, I think. Or no, maybe just one song. That's hysterical. Wouldn't that be funny? What's Evealer? Revealer. Heart of Gould. Yeah, it's just one song. Oh, what? Switch resolution. Lossy compressed file. Oh, this is to... The, oh, this is, is so you can you? see the difference. It has all different versions That's of the same cool. song. So you can listen to it and see if you can tell. That's that is cool. Yeah, that's what he used when he was pitching this. He'd go around to musicians in his electric Cadillac and say, "Would you like to listen to some music?" <laughs> cool. Yeah. Let me see what I'm the Pono. Put some fun music on here. Pono mm -hmm. player firmware. Lossless Hi. Extreme Studio. I own a Perno player. player, which is great when it comes to sound, but has crappy firmware. <laughs> uh, my idea is to craft a fake update file. Huh. Oh, interesting. Maybe the Pono is Android. It's gingerbread. Oh. <gasps> oh, that's not good. That's not good. How to upgrade Pono, latest firmware, 2022. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, there is a 201. Do you know this song? No. Okay. Actually, I might know the song, but... Oh, I've, yeah, of course I know the song, yeah. Oh, Scoop! Hey, 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 hey. Scoop! It's there that ice cream it song. <laughs> it's not Scoop, folks. It's Whoop. <laughs> W-H-O-O-P. <laughs> I'm glad they brought those guys back to do that uh, commercial. <sighs> uh, scoop! There it is. Um, laka shaka, laka shaka, chocolate laka. chips. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 8888, ask Leo. You know, it's funny. I can vividly remember this commercial, the song, the whole thing. I have no idea what it was a commercial for. No idea. Do you? Mm -mm. You remember the commercial, though, right? No. Oh, you don't? What you're talking about. Oh. I have no idea oh. what you're talking about. Okay. 8888, ask Leo. If you would like to have an idea of what we're talking about, give us a call and ask. <laughs> and tell us what we're talking tell about. Tell us what we're talking about. Let's see. We're going to go now to Kaliva, Michigan. Nathan's on the line. Am I saying that right? Kaliva? Kalva. Kalva. Kalva, yeah. Kalva. Kalva. Michigan, among all the states, has the most cities that you can't pronounce unless you're from Michigan. Yeah. Is that a That's test? Around here. I think it's a test, right, to see if you're a Michigander. Yeah, yeah, it goes with the territory. <laughs> it's Mackinac, buddy. Get out of here. So, what can I, uh, what can I do for you, Nathan? I am irritated with this phone that I have. I had a iPhone 11, uh, first time ever owning an Apple product. I was always an Android guy. Long story short, my daughter talked me into you know, signing up for the Verizon buy or get one, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I got an iPhone 11. I lost it a couple weeks ago. My cousin let me borrow his old Motorola C4 or something it oh was. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Yeah, I used that for a couple of days. Got uh, another iPhone 11, but this was the Pro that I got now that I'm talking on. Mm -hmm. And my question is, my, I, my first iPhone 11, I never dropped the hardly any calls anywhere I was at and I'm in a rural area up here and um, it was great for service 
great for internet. I had no problem getting on the internet. No problem calling people. This one I got right now, I'm surprised I'm talking to you to tell you the truth. Because every time I call, it drops. I can't call like 80% of the time. I cannot get on the internet unless I'm on wireless, Wi-Fi. And I don't know if it would it be the phone or it yeah, be a it, w- it would be the phone. <laughs> was, yeah, it was, uh, it's this old G four okay. that you got. That's not a very good phone. I mean, it's just out of date. Oh, I got I, I, I got the new I got a new iPhone. Oh, you got a new one. What'd you get? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. My iPhone eleven. Oh, you got another one. You got a new eleven. Okay. Yeah. It, well, then on that, I don't know. Was the iPhone yeah. 11 the one that had the two different models secretly, where one was CDMA and the other one was, you know, yeah. depending on which one? Because what I'm wondering is, you said the iPhone 11, the non-pro one, worked fine. You were able to get a connection, get a s- signal and service and all of that. Yeah. You're, you've got this pro yeah. now. I think it was either iPhone 10 or iPhone 11 where Apple had two different chips, depending on which carrier you they were They had with. Intel or Qualcomm yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that uh, could be what's okay. causing the difference here. Who's your carrier, first of all? That's Verizon. Verizon. And, uh, okay, so Verizon's usually pretty and I, good. I, and I took the chip from uh, that Motorola that was in that. Okay, so and the I first thing I would do is, not. first thing I would, it does work, but uh, the chip, which is your so-called SIM card, uh, identifies you. You do want a chip that is that has all the capabilities that phone is capable of. It's the same chip you were using in the old iPhone 11. No. Okay. No. Go into the Verizon I store. That SIM card. I lost all that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. You lost it, of course. Go into that store and get a new SIM card. Mm-hmm. SIM card. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering, but I went to the Verizon store the other day, and the girl kind of acted. It's like I was dumb or something. Like that wasn't going to make a difference. And she said, "Well, we'll reset it. That's probably the problem." So they did a reset, I guess. Which I'm not a tech savvy guy. I don't know about all this. Yeah, stuff, but that's but, no uh, excuse for her being rude. That's terrible. Well, that's what I kind of thought. Yeah. And, no, she she know, should be helpful. You're spending a lot of money for Verizon. Yeah. It's the it's the you know champagne of exactly. cell phone carriers. Well, that's what kind of irritated me. Yeah. You know, I, I was, uh, I was like, I, 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 I don't even want it no more. I'm to that point, you know, that I, I, every time I, I'm in my truck right now, I pulled over because every time it seems like I move, yeah. it drops the call. So I understand that cell phones, you know, uh, as you drive, you're handing off, and if it doesn't have great coverage in your area, it could drop. But, but you didn't have this problem on the old Motorola or your old iPhone, no. right? So no, it's no. and you're in the same areas. So I'm really do think it's the phone. Uh, the reset was a good start. I would go in and demand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you kind of go in saying I need a new SIM for this. Yeah, so we already reset it. Didn't fix it. I'm still getting a lot of dropping. I'm thinking of changing carriers, and then they okay. will then they will do something. I think because uh, that you mentioned um, that there was different. Two different chips or something? Do I have to tell them? I don't. One? Uh, I wouldn't worry about yeah, that. Was kind that. of a that was just a, a observation we needed to make for the sake of kind of narrowing down what it could be. I, yeah, yeah you, that's okay. something you do, you wouldn't need to worry about here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I'll start there then. Uh, I guess. All right. Yeah, it had me bewildered. Like I was, they should. I mean, look, it's their job. You're spending a lot of money with Verizon. It's their job to make your phone work. And you exactly. and, and you're always you've always got the option of saying you know I'm about to give up Verizon because of this I you know and that's the that was my next step yeah I hope you don't get the same customer rep that you got last time that's the other thing you know maybe she was having a bad day yeah, sometimes it's the person um, that you're talking maybe about maybe right she's now. just not very good yeah. maybe she didn't know what's going on if, maybe get another person keep going back till you get it fixed because you sh- it should you're paying for it it should work I appreciate yeah. it yeah and I and by the way. Long-time user of Verizon with an iPhone 11, a 12, and a 13, <laughs> and I haven't had any yeah. problems with it. So I think it's I think it's you just got to get that working right. Okay. All right. I really appreciate it. All right. Hey, it's good to talk to you. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, you know, I have one of the reasons I have all carriers is so that I you can, can uh, talk about them. it. Yeah. Uh, this iPhone's on a T-Mobile, but Lisa's iPhone uh, is on Verizon, and uh, she loves it. Works great. So I I think it's. Probably the phone, not the not the carrier. So Mackinac, 
Sault Ste. Marie, Ontonagon, Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte uh, Dowajak, <laughs> Okamas, Ypsilanti. I'm That's, just okay. These are starting to sound like curses. Or yeah, something. yeah. It's Michigan. The names of Michigan towns and landmarks are just difficult, or streets even. Streets even. Yeah, M I L A N, southeastern city in Michigan. It's not Milan. No, it's Milan. 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 Oh my Lanta. I think. Oh my Lanta. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Yes, I think. Uh, but I know now it's Calva. Okay, got that go. one. Got Calva. that one right. Yeah. Ignore uh, that E. Yeah. Ignore, ignore the E is silent, or something. <laughs> Hamtramck. I did know that one. Uh, Houghton, that sounds like a con, like a muscle. Condition. Hamtramck is good. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's no. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Hamtramck, Gaylord, not Gaylord. Nope. Gaylord Shaner, <laughs> not showing hour. You know, you just got to get them right. Eighty eight, eighty eight. Ask Leo is the uh, phone number. Who's coming up? Oh, before we go to that, I did say we were going to talk about Last Pass. Oh yeah, that's right. Last Pass. Uh, they took a couple of weeks. Uh, bleeping computer said, I've heard their last pass was hacked. Took them a couple of weeks to confirm it. But just the other day, last pass did say, yes, somebody got into last pass. They got source code, which is the code for the software. They did not, last pass says, as far as we can tell, get passwords, password vaults, anything that would affect your security. So as far as we know, and as far as last pass says, uh, if you are a LastPass customer, it's the number one password manager, um, you're okay. Uh, and we'll certainly keep our eye on that. But they say no passwords were stolen in the, the data breach. They didn't access passwords. They didn't access vaults. They got source code. Have fun with that. <laughs> Dick Bartolo, Mad's Maddest Writer, and our gizmo wizard will disco dance his way onto our floor in just a moment. Here he is boogieing across the floor. <laughs> what, what, where did the word boogie come from, I wonder? Boogie, boogie. Dick. Boogie, woogie. Boogie, boogie, woogie. <laughs> that doesn't really answer the question, Dick. Dick D. Bartolo. No, that's true. <laughs> Mad that's Magazine's true. maddest writer <laughs> and uh, our boogie, woogie bugler boy <laughs> joins us every week uh, to give us a gizmo or gadget. That's why we call him our gizmo wizard or gizwiz. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how are you? Are you know, you I just came up with a... A new term, a yes. new tech term. Yes. So when when a company is hacked, yeah, but they don't get passwords or information from customers, that's called breach light. Breach light. <laughs> it's a breach light. light. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a breach. But I don't normally report on breaches because there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's almost not worth even you know mentioning. But because LastPass is, you know, a lot of people's... Huge. Yeah, yeah. They're the number one password manager, and a lot of people rely on them for security. I just wanted to reassure people, at least so far, it doesn't look like there's any uh, it seemed, problem. Yeah. yeah. So what's up in your world? Oh, well, you know, I have a, a neat little gadget, compliments of Soundcore. Now, oh, they released... we were just new... talking about Oh, Anchor. you have them too? Well, no, but I know I know Anchor's stuff. We were talking about Eufy and Soundcore. They have these, they've spun out these brands. Uh, and I yeah, think they're very so, good, yeah. Uh, a week ago, we went to a press briefing on these new earbuds, and they were released on Thursday. And Friday, about 8 in the morning, uh, FedEx rings my bell, and they said, well, now you can try them yourself. And they're called the Space A40, the smallest, lightest earbuds that... Sound cores ever made. I put them on my scale. The earbuds themselves, the sm I don't have a very accurate scale. It keeps going between 0.03 ounces wow. and 0.04 <laughs> ounces. Wait a so minute. So the no, earbuds that's like a butterfly's wing. <laughs> that is, they're tiny guys. Wow. So now the earbuds. Do you even can you even the feel them in case, your ear? Do you know you're wearing them? You, you know you wear them only because. They are the tightest fitting earbuds oh. I ever had. Actually, that's good. I know that sounds bad, but that's actually good, right? Yeah. 
And there's six mics in there uh, for automatic noise reduction. Oh. So it's almost like putting on noise reduction headphones. Ah. Uh, but there is in the app, in the app, you can hit transparency mode if you want some outside noise in there while you're walking uh, on the streets. Uh, the whole package with the charging case and the earbuds weighs four ounces. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And the so charging charge, case gives you how many hours? Uh, another four times. So it's 50 wow. hours total. Wow. 10 hours in the ear. <laughs> wow. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. That's like a and, whole week's and the, worth of listening. Yeah. And the, chase, the, the case is USB-C or wireless. Oh, and nice. Just for, just for last, I stood it on my stand-up phone charger, and it charged the case. Oh, so that's yeah, nice. I was going to yeah. I was going to dig out an old uh, flat pad. Um, you get five. It, it comes with the mediums already inserted into the earbuds, which turned out to be exactly what I needed. But there's four other pair from. Yeah, this is. Four, uh, I love when extra small, more extra options. Large. This is so three. important. Yeah, because the seal determines how good the base is. If you ask me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now this, uh, the, they were. Talking about this being a very special thing, uh, AAC LDAC LDAC. LDAC. <laughs> okay, Jinx available <laughs> only to Android. So it's the first time that the Androids uh, have something that I guess iPhone doesn't. Um, ninety nine bucks, ninety nine ninety nine. And they went See, that's a great price. On, yeah. Was, yeah. I, I for, think it is. For Apple's version. AirPod so this is, Pro with noise cancellation, 250 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. This wow. is a really good price. So it sounds like a budget-friendly option for folks who want to have that active noise cancellation. If you're on Android, then you can use that. Uh, basically, it's a higher quality Bluetooth codec so that you can hear uh, the music a lot better. Well, you know, some say. <laughs> and yeah, yes, I know. Yeah, no. They were pointing cool. out the only other headphones that have them that they knew of was Sony at 249 and wow. Techniques at 229. So they're the first to get it uh, on earbuds under 99.99. Um, black, navy, and white are the choices. Nice. Now, if yeah, you want to know like more it. about these, uh, Dick's got a link at his website, gizwiz, G I Z W I Z dot. B I Z, uh, that's his site. Uh, click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. That's a big blue button on the right. But you can also go there and see the stuff he shows on World News Now. Uh, I bet you'll show these on World News Now at some point. These uh, these are pretty. Yeah, sweet. probably for yeah. Christmas uh, yeah. for holiday shopping. Yeah. Uh, he also has a fun page called "What the Heck Is It?" We are almost to the bitter yes. end. Yes. On uh, this nightstick or whatever it is. <laughs> um, it's something. It's a close-up of a gadget or a gizmo you have till the end of the month. Three more days, four more days to uh, identify it. Now, here's how it works. There's full rules on the website, but essentially he's got 18 autographed copies of Mad Magazine. Uh, and he'll give uh, six for the correct answer up to 12 for the best wrong answer, the funnest wrong answer. And if they're more than a, that, they'll have, you know, a drawing or whatever. And you're playing for this edition of Mad Magazine, the Poltergeist Ooh, edition. Spooky. He's here. <laughs> oh, I get it. This is probably like the October issue, huh? That is correct, I get sir. It. So you're playing now for, uh, well, but you'll get it. As soon as that, that's it's what over. that's what well yeah we'll be sending them out nice uh, September first or second. I always ask Dick. Dick's been in every copy of Mad Magazine for the last how many years? Fifty years. Fifty one years. Wow. wow. So I always ask what what do you have in this one? Uh, I think I have four things in there, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens after fifty one years. And yes, and in December. Yeah, there will be some original material because December Mad marks seventy years <sighs> of Mad. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow. So, wow! Did you do uh, the parody of uh, The Shining called The Shiner? <laughs> no. I know you do movie parodies. I, I did a I did a, uh, I did a parody of oh there there was a a TV show called. Medium. 
Tedium, you mean? <laughs> yes. So, well, yes. that that was my take. Tedium. 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 Medium was was a show about a a medium who would help solve crimes, help the police. I think I've seen that and show. I, that's actually. what I call it. Te- <laughs> I I. So love I guess Mad I just Magazine. have one thing in that issue. I yeah. grew up on that's Mad. My whole life, I've read this guy, uh, and uh, and didn't even know that someday. I would get his rejected gadgets. <laughs> if only I'd known as a small child forking over my 35 cents for Mad yeah, Magazine. That we'd be working together for someday. 18 years. 18 this years? Coming February. My word. This oh February my 2023. Goodness. 18 years. Dick has a great podcast, gizwiz.tv, weekly podcast, and of course, don't forget... Lots of other stuff on his website, including Mad Memorabilia and Match Game Memorabilia at gizwiz.biz. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, buddy. I'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to play the What the Heck Is It contest last chance. The time is ticking. Hey, speaking of time ticking, I think the clock on the wall says, huh? Says, (laughs) it's, well, it's over your shoulder. That's why you can't see it. Says it's time to go. Oh, Micah Sargent, you'll find his shows on twit.tv, including uh, the iOS Today show at twit.tv slash iOS Mm -hmm. and Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. And of course, he joins us every Saturday to backstop me, to help me get it right. Thank you, Micah, (laughs) for being here. You're very welcome. appreciate it. Thanks to our musical director, Professor Laura, Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. Of course, thanks to you for being here. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks for calling and listening. I'm Leo Laporte. Your tech guy. We'll see you next time. Have a great geek week. Goodbye. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech. And you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on. And on. And of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon this week in tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great tech guy show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. <laughs>